Hey man, check it out, huh? Ah, it's an alien! Encounter. Welcome once again, everybody, to the shit list. Somebody made a comment about uh, Will Smack and Aliens. Maybe nice. that's what he should have said to Chris Rock after uh, he smacked him instead of keep my wife's name out your mouth. He should have been like, Welcome to Earth. <laughs> that <would have> been <laughs> funny. Now, that's what I call a close encounter, is what Chris Rock should have said after that. <laughs> mm. yes, well, good evening, everybody. Looks like she's from outer space. <laughs> yes, his wife does look like an alien, but I didn't say that. So, anyway, good evening, everybody, and welcome again to the shit list tonight. We're going to talk about the top five movie aliens, to be specific, because there's a whole nother list to be had when it comes to TV aliens. Um, but we have with us an awesome panel tonight. We have the rare treat of having Brahma Bull with us tonight. How are you doing, good friend? Pretty good. It's been what a month and a half since I've been on. It yeah. Was- it's hard to do Sundays during December because so much family is visiting during that month. So I just decommitted to everything. But I'm back for a while now. So great to see y'all. Awesome. Uh, we also have with us Andy Masterson. How are you doing? Oh, you're, you're still muted, muted in the stream yard. In the stream yard part. Ah, there we go. How is everyone tonight? Um, Good. You may be coming through the wrong mic. How about now? Uh, tap on your, your mic. Let's hear. Hello. Oh, no, never mind. It was just needed to adjust the game. itself. Okay. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay. Uh, welcome, Andy. How are you doing? Not very well. My dog is deciding whether or not he wants to stay down here or not. So he's being fussy. Dogs can do that. Now I got the DNA done. Oh, yeah? So yeah. what would you do that for? Just to find out uh, his uh, breed? Well, or? my father-in-law was, we were having this big debate over you know, what the dog was, because when we ah. adopted him, he was supposedly a shepherd mix. And it turns out he's mostly uh, husky <laughs> and he's a mutt with all kinds of uh, stuff thrown in. So, but he's a hundred percent mine and I love him. So that's what matters. That's right. Uh, we also have with us the green gobbler known as toxic man flu. How are you doing? Doing well tonight. Hope everybody out there is doing okay. Got a lot of good people on the chat already talking to some of them. So, uh, we were talking backstage and think there's going to be uh, multiple problems with our list. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh, this is going to go well. Everybody's going to be like, that better be on the list. That better be on the list. Uh, it's going to be yeah, like, well, um, uh, uh, There's going to be a lot of failures from this panel. Uh, just a, there's so much to pick from. I know. This is a, this. one of the harder ones. Oh, we got Mrs. Flu in the chat. Hey. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's doing Knowledge well. Knowledge the missus. Yeah, so I, uh, Mrs. Flu... Uh, um, I asked her to make me a sandwich, and she goes, you know oh. what kind of sandwich I'm going to make you? An Ikea sandwich. Knuckle? Oh, an Ikea no, she sandwich. she goes, uh, we got all the parts in the fridge. You just have to go make it yourself. And she oh, womp womp. Bam. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's fun. almost like Rodney Dangerfield level there. That is good, good level, yeah. That's pretty good. Flu condition out, that's for sure. Uh, indeed. Uh, and we also have with us Mr. Gary Ambrosia, the best-looking man on the panel. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing all right. How are you doing? I'm um, doing okay, but it looks like uh, Tox's ex-wife is right behind you over your left shoulder. Uh-oh. Well, uh, Tox, I'm sure if you turned on your camera, I would be the second best-looking guy on the panel. Uh, no. 
<laughs> I can tell you that. Um, I think Scribe and I might be in a fight uh, with Tom uh, for bottom. But, wait, uh, wait, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, I, I ain't no bottom. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Not, this is not that kind of show. Let's not part anything. Not yet. This ain't oh, wow. Dick's division, dude. <laughs> Mrs. Flew just walked by really aggressively. Boom, I thought she was going to come in here and hit me. Oh, hell, oh, yeah. hell. She says, boom. Sweet. Boom. She throw at you. <laughs> yeah, she she did buy some more beef jerky today at Sam's Club, so I might be at a little. Oh, you What's might be beef in trouble. Jerky? There's plenty, you know. Beef jerky time. Uh, we also have with us Scribe Light, as mentioned. How are you doing? Doing all right. Uh, I had to resist the temptation to put uh, Polly Shore's Richard Simmons on my list. Oh my yeah. gosh. Did you guys see that short film? Yeah, yeah I watched the whole thing. Yeah. It's both awesome, terrifying, hilarious, and weird all at the same time, if that can even be possible. Yeah, that, that was almost my my number five joke entry on my list, but I thought, nah, I gotta I gotta do something else. I turned yeah, to I the wife while we were watching it and was like, This may be the most normal I've ever seen Pauly Shore act. And he's playing well, Richard Simmons. That's true, I guess. If Unless you've seen him in his... Uh, the, has anybody else on the panel, I doubt it, seen uh, Pauly Shore's Dead? No. 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 It's a movie he made himself years ago, and he plays himself in it. So actually, that's probably the movie he acts the most, quote-unquote, normal in. And it's actually better than it has any right to be. The basic plot is he fakes his own death because he's sick and tired of everybody treating him like this has been. <laughs> and he actually gets caught. So it, like it, it actually, the story is actually kind of interesting. He gets sent to prison and all this other shit. It's actually kind of funny. Actually, it, it it's like one of those movies where you're like, damn, this is so much better than it should have been. <laughs> like, mm. But he made it all by himself with HD cams and everything like that back in the day when they were brand new and shit. And yeah, wow, that's it, funny. It, some good cameos in it and stuff. So, yeah. Well, back in the day, but, uh, even to play an idiot, you had to have talent. That's true. Uh, we got Nick the Geek here in the house. Or Greek, I'm sorry. Not Nick the Greek, Geek. Geek Geek would be a totally different one. He's Nick the Greek. Uh, how you doing, Nick the Greek? Sorry about that. So we're sending four ninety nine. It says, Killer Clowns from Out of Space. Better be on someone's list. Also, shame, Tom. No predator in the intro. I know. Uh -oh. I, sh I should have probably. You know what? This is one of both simultaneously the worst and best intros I think I've ever made because I was really lazy in the image, like the, the, the clips. I just threw them all together for the most part, but I lucked out that the Martian from Mars attack sounds like he's rapping to the music. <laughs> and I just, that made me giggle every time. So at the same time, it's like both great and horrible. So I apologize. Uh, but uh, yeah, I also didn't know how to start it. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe I'll just throw the Cheech Marin. It's an alien thing. <laughs> Even though that has no bearing on this show whatsoever. But anyway, uh, I want to welcome everybody to the, to the show. We've got some great people in the chat. It looks like besides Mrs. Flew, we got Davina Duckworth here. We got Joe Pat 87. Peter Venkman's fan site is here. Uh, we've got Corleen Rogue. We've got Tony Giff. Uh, we've got Price of Reason in the house. we got Amelia Clark scroll arm. We got uh, Putin's cat here. Mecca J's in the house. Jonah Hex. So many regulars. Hit the like button. Tripping Orc is here. I see K Shoals here. Uh, we even got our panel hanging out in the chat saying hi to everybody. That's awesome. Uh, I want to say hello to all the mods as well. We got Nicholas Horton here. We got, uh, let's see here. We got CC hanging out in the chat. I'm sure he's swinging around a wrench. So look out. Uh, we also have, let's see here. Dar Scipio. Walt Wright is here. Uh, and I see somebody ask about the humanoid part. Well, I think the answer is in the thumb in the intro. As long as they're aliens and they're in a movie, it counts. So, and, and I didn't even differentiate. There could be there could be illegal aliens on this list. Oh, I didn't know I could put Cheech and Chong on the list. Okay. Well, you, ma <laughs> you you made your list. It's too late. Yeah, I know. I know it's too late. Never mind. I'm kidding. No, actually, I think that'd probably be where we draw the line. Clearly, space aliens would be the uh, criteria here. As uh, Mecca J, uh, uh, I was going to do all the bimbos from outer space, but you told I'm me I'm surprised your list wasn't all Godzilla. <laughs> like, yeah, well, you know, I was like Space Godzilla. You know, I was I could list them all, but 
Now, I want to do Bimbo from Outer Space, but you told me this wasn't a political show and I couldn't talk about Kamala Harris, so... <laughs> okay, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Very sad. You, you speak better about our president. She's from the planet Mattress Bag. <laughs> oh! Yeah. Heels yeah. up. Heels up. I'd like to introduce uh, President Kamala Harris. That's right. <laughs> That's who's <laughs> Nicholas Horton sends in a member chat. How you doing, Nick? Uh, says, hail everyone. The Martian more taxi and aliens from the War of the Worlds better be on the list. Oh, geez. What a Ooh. great show. <laughs> you know what I just realized? Technically, mm -hmm. there is at least one, one Earthling that could qualify, maybe two or three. Because one almost made my list. Uh, and this oh. is one that I think is safe to say that didn't make anybody's list, but could have, and that would be the uh, the, the 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 Matt Damon Martian movie, because technically he's an alien yeah. in that movie. Because as right. he points uh, out, the the definition <laughs> of actually uh, colonizing he he once he plants the 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 and grows the uh, crops oh. or whatever, he's like he's officially you know. Yeah, uh, colonized. He's a, he's a, point, you, he's a Martian you, and all that shit. You could have yeah, said, so. said John Carter. He was John Carter is the one I was going to say that almost made my list. Actually. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to. No, no, anything. it's cool. Yeah. But I was like, I was just going to point that out one too. It's like, or, um, yeah, so I, I just thought of the Matt Damon one when he said the Martian more taxi. I know you're not talking about the Matt Damon one, Nicholas, but I just thought of that. I'm like, oh, yeah. Or uh, what's his name from uh, Farscape? He could count as an alien too, technically. Yeah. There's probably a few that, that might barely qualify or whatever, yeah. but. Uh, We've got over 500 people watching, so hit that like button. You guys are just in time heading over here from Valiant Renegades uh, channel. This worked out perfectly tonight because we are ready to just get started. As Tox has our lovely art here. Look at that green lady there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, wow. You know, I like green ladies. <laughs> Would you like to uh, come to the captain's quarters? <laughs> I can help you out. You know what I like? I can. Girl like you. I'll show you the captain's log. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's quite large. <laughs> Full of girth. I'm not making any comments about that woman. Because they call my me. My wife is in chat. The girth from Earth, <laughs> actually. Right. Yeah, I uh, like this image. That was pretty good. Um, and then we got Nick the Greek sending in a quick buck 99 who says, Kevin Spacey from K Pax. You know, that's probably one of the only movies he doesn't play a killer in, I swear. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, the uh, Bobby Darren film. The ref. Well, we don't know if Bobby Darren didn't kill somebody or not. <laughs> well, Mrs. Flu did say that uh, posing for this picture was a pain because of oh. all the makeup oh, and stuff. So, wow. Know. Tell her uh, yeah. thank you. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it took a while. But her eyes you normally go all red whenever I've done something wrong. When you've so done something wrong. Green. But they're yeah, green with envy nice. right now. So Yeah, that's what it was. Good all stuff. right, let's oh, six sent in, in a pooper sticker, I bet. Let me see. Yep, yep it's a pooper sticker. Yep. Hey. <laughs> hey, six. I don't know if you're working or not, but uh hopefully not too hard if you are. Uh we miss you as always. Mm -hmm. But let's get this shit list on the road. What do we got we first, go. Tox? First is um, my number five, Pizza the Hut from Spaceballs, well, 1987. If it isn't Lone Star, and his sidekick, <laughs> Puke. Pizza's going to send out for you. Um, there are many aliens across the galaxy and multiple films that we could pick. And um, a lot of my picks are coming from the 80s because I saw this in theater. I believe Mrs. Flu and I went to go see this together. And when Pizza the Hut came out, I got the case of the giggles with that, just like through many parts of this film. It's like one of the most obvious jokes, but it's like if you don't have it in the movie, it's like, you know what I mean? Exactly. And I'm like, oh, and it just made me laugh the whole time. And it had its own play set. <laughs> this just was great. A million space bucks. bucks. And uh, yeah, so Pizza Hut. Uh, Pizza the Hut being the antagonist in that one, one of my favorite aliens of all time. And then how they get out of having to pay him back is he eats himself to death. <laughs> death. <laughs> right. Well, you know, the guy in the suit almost died, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You were talking about that. Yeah. Because uh, to, to keep the pizza, because it was actually 
pizza on him. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Like they didn't like make a mold or anything like that. Cause they couldn't quite figure out how to make it look real like bubbling pizza so what they, they did a is a bunch they of lit- melted cheese on them yeah. well, on this like metal cage thing that was heated up through like yep. a filament yep and it ended up catching fire and the guy inside couldn't breathe <laughs> mm-hmm. <Burn laughs> so the he guy almost inside. asphyxiated yeah you have to sh- suffer for your art somebody's like you do damn it smells good in here <laughs> <laughs> and then you hear <laughs> <laughs> poor bastard oh that poor guy what you got to do to be in a Mel Brooks film. Yep. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is one of my favorites of all time when it comes to films. And uh, one thing you can pop in there and just watch. And again, there were so many aliens you could have uh, picked across there. I could have picked yogurt and all that stuff. But dink, Pizza dink. the Hut. That's the just... best one in that movie. Oh, dink, 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 dink. But if I do that, Disney all I think World. of is comics division with the little dinky <laughs> things running around, you know, and all that. Pizza the Hut, though, man. You know, you know. You know, you guys know that the Dink Dinks do a commentary on the Spaceballs DVD. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> dink, 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 It's great. The whole fucking time. <laughs> just to be Which a part of a because crew like Mel Brooks. I don't even uh, think Mel Brooks, Mel Brooks had the, he didn't even do like a whole entire commentary. It's just like a couple of scenes, but like we got a whole Dink commentary. Yeah, yeah that was great. <laughs> All right. That's mine. Uh, All anyone right. else? All right. No, I don't think anybody else had it, but that's an inspired choice, my friend. Right, right. And we only had a few cop uh, um, dupes this time, so I want to get through it real quick here. Number five, uh, Brahma's uh, The Bugs from Starship Troopers, another film and <clears throat> book that I really enjoy. So, Yeah, especially The Brain Bug with the uh, very vaginal opening. Yeah, that <laughs> was uh, yeah, it was very interesting. That, that did something for you, huh? Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they had to censor it every time uh, they showed it on, on the public broadcast. But no, I just like I I kind of went with the list in a weird way because, uh, no, I didn't go with any of the major ones like uh, The Predator or Aliens or any of those. I went with movies that I liked that just had happened to have aliens in them. And uh, yeah, the bugs in Starship Troopers. I love watching that movie. And uh, there's some funny gags with the, with the bugs and the kids squishing the bugs on the on the uh, asphalt and all that kind of stuff. So <laughs> mm-hmm. the and only good the bug is better. a dead bug. Dead bug. <laughs> yep. Zim found the brain bug. That was so funny. Scared. <laughs> yeah. Yay! It's scared. It's, it's afraid. Yeah. It's a great film. And, yep. uh, and I like then, the one where. They blow the hole through it, and then the guy tosses a grenade and it explodes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In there. I like Tina Meyer in the shower. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, that too. Man. Yeah, you could do that. I mean, I like how Paul Verhoeven is, is trying so desperately hard to normalize co-ed showering. Yes, <laughs> right. I will never do it, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, good pick. That's that's proof of intelligent design. You yeah. know what happens to men in cold water, but you also know what happens to women in cold water, which counteracts the thing that happens to men in cold water. <laughs> exactly. Not if you got two inches of terror, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you're a two pump chump. <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah. It's barred. Don't, don't matter how big it is if it only lasts two seconds. Like, you know. Mm-hmm. I thought, yeah, I Denise, think that movie somebody was mentioned my Denise introduction Richard. to Denise Richards, too. Yeah. 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 She didn't do too well in this. I, 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 it didn't follow the book 100%, of course. No. no, 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 no not at, all. at all. Come close. It's more it. of a sequel no. to RoboCop than it is a, a pretty <laughs> much yeah. Troopers pretty much. Uh, adaptation in a lot of ways. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. Because uh, it's pretty clear that Verhoeven like, set it in like the same damn universe. You mm-hmm. even have like the news breaks. You have mm-hmm. you know all the same yards, kind right. of satirical bite to it. It feels like this is the 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 future extended from you know RoboCop's world in a weird way, but like yeah, the book is a completely different political swing to it. It right. too, isn't it? Right. Yeah. It's yeah. been and years and years and that's years. That's why the movie's yeah. so different because the guy completely disagreed with the political take in the book, so he was trying to dismantle it. Right. And see, nowadays we'd bitch about that, but Verhoeven just made it so cool. Well, it was yeah. so different that you really couldn't call it the same thing. Right. Right. They made uh, they made four more of these. I know. Yep. 
And then yeah. the last Jack Jack Dean is in like all of them, isn't he? All he's, the uh, like the second, I think. But he's he's in the third one. He's in the I third think. one. He's not yeah. in the second. He's in third one, I think, is Marauder. But he's not he's a little bit in the fourth one, which starred Jolene Blaylock right after she oh. got out of Enterprise. And mm. I saw it late night alone kind of thing. And uh it's the one where the planet the entire planet is a bug. That they're on and all that stuff. It was the CGI was hmm. awful. But you know, it was oh, yeah. a shoestring budget, something like that. So and then you had uh, Roughnecks, the uh, CGI animated uh, series. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah, that was that was actually it, I, when I watched. It, I remember it, it reminded me a lot of like um, uh, Space Above and Beyond or something. It's pretty dark and kind of, oh, kind of serious for an animated thing. Yeah, Space and Be- Above and Beyond. I thought they were poised to. You know, back when it took a while for a show to get started, that one in Firefly. I can't believe they pulled the plug on. Yeah. Uh, so early that I, yeah. I really liked where that one was going and unfortunately the last show they they knew that they weren't coming back and so they rewrote a lot of what they were doing that last show was supposed to be a cliffhanger but space above and beyond is a great show dj gravy max mix um i think there could be an argument to be made that robocop starship mm-hmm. troopers and total recall are all in the same kind of universe mm-hmm I, that'd be a question I'd ask Verhoeven, and he'd probably be like, "You are talking." Of about course, total, it is the Total Recall remake, right? Because the no, 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 the original. Oh the god, the, the one, the one, one that the, Verhoeven did, the hand phone. Yeah, you're talking about that one with uh, three tits. Okay. Yeah, that one. Get your ass to Mars. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thank you for All choosing right. Johnny Cab. <laughs> um, moving on. That's a that's moving a good, that, right yeah. along. Here's Scribes number Killer five, clowns, Killer Clowns outer from Space. Yeah, uh, nothing better than a bunch of seven foot tall, grotesque clowns cocooning people in uh, cotton candy to suck their blood out. Plus, my I think my favorite part it's it's the shortest, maybe cheapest gag, is when the guy makes a balloon animal dog as their bloodhound. <laughs> nice. And he start, yeah, he just there's a lot of great sight gags. In yeah, this. The, the, it, I just uh, I remember watching this as a as a kid and just thinking it's absolutely ridiculous. Thankfully, didn't take itself seriously. And just uh, mm-hmm. just a really fun movie. And of course, they've been threatening for years to make some kind of sequel or something. It's never happened. Um, I shared something. What was it last week or the week before from one of the Kyoto brothers mm-hmm. uh, where it sounded like he was hinting at something because he had posted some fake thing that was like a spoof poster about, a you know, the killer clowns from outer space take Christmas or something like that. And then like a week after that. So it was after Christmas. He reposted it again. And I can't remember what he posted on there, but I was like, hmm, is this a sign that this might be happening finally? Because, yeah, you're right. There's been a sequel in development hell Mm -hmm. for years now. And the Kyoto Brothers made this, uh, like, for next to nothing. It was kind of an indie kind of feature almost. Clearly paying loving homage to the 1950s horror films, you know, and and alien films. There's kind of a spinoff, though, because weren't all of these repurposed for Ernest Scared Stupid? That is true. The the, Mm -hmm. the, Nice poll. They did. That's a nice one. Yeah, but didn't given the budget, a, I mean, I'm oh, sorry. Oh no, didn't they make an animated this? No, it, no there's a they're the working on a video game right now. Killer Tomatoes, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're thinking of tomatoes. Same yeah. Vein. Right. yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. What I were you saying, Scribe? Like? What were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say just the the thing that stood out to me over the years is that I think even today, given how low budget it was, the uh, monster makeup just still holds up. It still looks so uh, so well done and just so grotesque and freakish. Um, I mean, the guy on the the, the far uh, uh, left there uh, doesn't he look like Keith Richards? Yeah. A does. little bit from that <laughs> picture. That's what I just want to say. Like, is it, does he look at Keith Richards or if he's like just a little less? Ubi, he's the little yeah. guy, and he's actually the cutest of the bunch. But yeah, but he's yeah. But I guess the most expensive prop on this entire deal was the popcorn shooting gun that they had. <laughs> Whereas yeah. in, in this in this world, popcorn is like clown eggs, or it's just yeah. so bizarre. It's so weird. But it's great. It is a great laugh. Uh, it's actually it's not nearly as uh, I, I watched it a couple of years ago, and for some reason I remembered it being much more violent than it actually is. I mean, all things considered, there's one decapitation as far as I can recall, but otherwise it's relatively tame, all things considered. It's one of those movies you can see as kind of like an adolescent or a kid, and it would probably 
freak you out. Yeah. But as an adult, remember, yeah. you can see it through the satirical lens, and it's kind of like, yeah, very. I saw this when I was a kid. Yeah. I was terrified. Yeah. Well, clowns That's are probably bad. the um, the thing that abusive parents do to the children just to really screw with them because they're they're terrifying. Mm-hmm. I Here, can't go stand see the clowns. Clown. Yeah, I can't stand them. You go to to Cirque du Soleil. Been a couple of times. Yep. And they have these these uh, clowns, the French clowns, and um, that's I think the French invented clowns, and they love Jerry Lewis more than anyone else. If that tells you oh, their sense yeah. of humor, yeah. yeah. And I think that they just they they see stuff they think is funny, and it's just not. All I know is that. I was going to say they've been waiting for the day the clown cried to come out for years now. The French actually, it's going to be soon. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're actually releasing it. Is it finally coming? Not releasing it to the world, but you can go see it at the uh, um, oh shit, Uh, whichever museum it is, the film museum thing where they keep all the. Wouldn't the French version be mimes? (laughs) It's a silent film. True, it's a silent film. (laughs) They screw the screw the silencer into the. (laughs) Well, talking about clowns being terrified, that's the thing I always notice, too, is the only kids who ever like clowns are the weird kids anyway who grow up to be clowns, and like 90% of them turn out to be Mm -hmm. serial killers anyway, so right, I think there's some sort of connection there. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, the French can make some of the cheapest war films of all time because they just start with the opening credits, come out, surrender, closing credits. (laughs) And every time you say something like that, though, that I just said, like, somebody will come out and go, that's not true. That's one of the problems we have with, you know, stigma against clowns. It's like, well, quit fucking killing people. (laughs) Well, there's always simple comics, you know, that's but that's different. You know, that's Uh. disabled clown. (laughs) <laughs> it's a great pick that's a whole nother kind of clown yeah hopefully he's not listening mm. he's like you All son right, of a so bitch we'll go on to the next one yeah that is yes. exactly what he would say to me yeah uh gary's number five probably Somebody the had greatest to. pick of all time mac all right. from mac and me the movie so i have a little story about this <clears throat> so i think it was 1988 and uh, i was living with my mom in um in Thousand Oaks, I was eight years old, and uh, we got invited to a pre-screening of a movie that w- we didn't know what it was. It was at our local theater, the Melody Theater in Thousand Oaks, and uh, so me and and some of the friends in, in my neighborhood, some friends from school, there was about three or four of us. Our moms took us to go see this movie, and it was Mac and Me. Um. You know, I was eight, you know, and I liked it fine, you know, but uh, for some reason, I really wanted a, a Big Mac afterward. Um, <laughs> I don't know for why. For some reason. But, you know, I just watched this. And a um, Coke. I just watched this movie, and it's, God, it's terrible. You know, it's really, <laughs> really bad. It is. But, you know, the Mystery Science Theater, the newer one that they did of this movie, is one of the funniest episodes I've ever seen of that series. If you haven't seen that, check that out. But it's so weird. I watched this movie. I probably watched this movie about eight times in the past couple months. It's fucking god awful, but it just reminded me of that time. (laughs) It just reminded me of the time when I got, you know, uh, invited to watch this piece of shit, you know, as a a test audience member uh, way back in the day. And I don't know. There's some weird nostalgia about it for me. Uh, so I, I greatly apologize to the chat for putting this uh, a- this alien on the list, but I had to do it, you know. It's Paul Rudd's favorite movie. I it was just going to say, is. the funniest thing in this movie or about <laughs> this movie is that every damn time Paul Rudd's on a talk show, he like they're like, oh, you got a clip from your new movie? Sure, let's roll it. It's always the clip. Yeah. <laughs> the kid falling yeah, off the, the cliff. Falling off the cliff. <laughs> every time. <Yeah. laughs> no matter what it is he's there for, it's that, yeah. Yeah. So, like, uh, that being said, like, yeah, that's probably the funniest thing about the movie. But, no, like, yeah, I remember growing up. And at the time, as a kid, you don't notice it. But as an adult, you clearly see it for what it is. And it was uh, a, commercial a commercial for Coke and McDonald's. Yeah. Just 
Yeah. yeah. And you know, there's a there's a Japanese version of this movie too, where the kid actually gets shot point blank by one of the aliens, the kid in the wheelchair. They they blast his ass in the movie, <laughs> and it's fucking horrifying. I saw the 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 cut scene on on uh, on the the internets. And uh, I was like, I thought wow. it was the government people that shoot the kid, but the alien bring him back I to life. I thought it was like that. I, it, okay, maybe that was the case, but it yeah, looked I can't like remember, the alien yeah, had right. the pistol. There is like an alternate cut to it. And yeah. I think the fucking alien shot the kid, and I'm like, wow, they just shot a handicapped kid in, the, in a wheelchair with <laughs> point <laughs> blade so with a crazy. bullet, you big bullet you. wound to his chest. I was like, fuck, this is fucking crazy. Because <laughs> I thought, I think it's on the Blu ray, but yeah, no, yeah. it's crazy, yeah. <laughs> You I sure toyed kid wasn't with doing a YouTube stunt video. Yeah, YouTube stunt. <laughs> yeah. I toyed with putting that image on here. <laughs> <laughs> I would have laughed my ass off one. if you did. <laughs> <laughs> and I was gonna go. Well, it's Gary, and he picked it, smacking me. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. what a that, that, how, that's how they they tease this movie. They're like, it's ET, but this time we killed a kid. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um, that might work. Might do it. <laughs> oh, no, no. <coughs> yes. If I could have gotten away with a gif of that, I would have. Oh, man. Yeah, Tom. Tom might get a strike. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I, say, I would have laughed if you just had the image, but GIF might have been too much. Yeah. That might have been a little <laughs> so bit too much. Yeah, I was thinking about bringing the clip up now that you guys said it, but I'm like, eh, yeah, yeah, maybe not. Not a good idea. It was, yeah, eight-year-old in theater seeing that. I'm sure you're scarred. I'll just say. Oh, man. I'm, yeah, I'm glad that they wasn't They showed us in this fucking scene. movie in school, man. They gave, I think, I swear they gave this movie out to schools. They had to have. Probably it's so inoffensive yeah. that they showed it everywhere. Because it even had like a McDonald's sticker on it and everything. I remember the teacher bringing it out, mm -hmm. and yeah. like that's the first it's time I saw like it. McDonald's, it's everywhere and takes a dump. Makes you take a dump. It's just awful. <laughs> Great pick, Gary. I'm glad you did it. None of us. <laughs> I knew somebody you're, would. You're welcome. I jumped on that grenade for you. Thank so. you. <laughs> All right, we'll go on to the next one. Unless anybody's got go for it. All right. Unless anybody else has any more Mac stories. Uh, so we go from Mac and me to uh, Andy's pick, The Abyss. Which George Lucas recycled in as the, the cloners, right? In, uh, <laughs> uh, on Camino. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, this is a really cool thing. Like, you know, you get down there. The I thought like that image there where the, the water takes the shape of, like, you know, the mimics everything, does the person. That was really cool. And then, of course, you get to see the aliens at the end, which, you know, is sort of mm -hmm. like a... Um, you know, an homage to uh, Close Encounters and stuff. And, uh, you know, you had, you know, a couple of the other things that Lucas did with the uh, the one Jedi guy in the council had the same kind of tall look and everything like that. But it was... Long neck. Yeah, it was kind of cool seeing that on, like, a, it was it was a neat movie. It was very different, and it was something that... Well, it was um, groundbreaking at the time, yeah. too, with the yeah. effects, yeah. And, of course, Mary Elizabeth Antonio like, mess things up for Julia Roberts with the whole, you know, defibrillator thing because, like, you know, she wouldn't take her top off and, you know, the true actress did, you know, for accuracy's sake. Mm -hmm. Right. Good pick, Andy. Oh, yeah, I didn't know Julia pick. was supposed to be in this. No, no, she did flatliners, but she wouldn't take her shirt off. Oh, gotcha. Back. Okay, I was like, okay, that I didn't know. Yeah, I was like, okay, I see what you're talking about now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen flatliners, yeah. That was convincing too, like the makeup they had on her, like you know, turning blue from that icy water. It was like, Ugh. yeah. Oh, that's because Cameron probably killed her. Oh yeah, she brought her back to life. <laughs> Method yeah. directing. I'm gonna make this real. She's like, yeah. trust me, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a. You yeah. sure you can bring me back to life? I'm pretty sure. I'm only gonna drown you for a minute. It's okay. Yeah. We have to get I it on tested camera, it on right? a couple of mice. Yeah. <laughs> well, that scene with the mouse and that liquid thing that the rat was actual. It actually. Did that? Oh yeah, yeah. I was auctioning. That's why. Man. Okay, yeah. So that's a funny bit of a trivia. That's one thing I do know. That's why the movie will not be released in uh, the UK now, because Cameron refuses to edit that scene out. And since Disney won't do a new master for the UK, they've just decided not to release the Abyss in the UK. Wow. <laughs> when the 4K comes <laughs> out here, yeah. Because mm -hmm. Disney was going to cut it, which means it would have been cut for everybody. Mm. You know, nah, you don't want to do that. 
Yeah, but Cameron's like, nope. Can we keep all the stuff? This Luckily, was the first he has movie control. that uh, yeah. made me realize that the deep, the ocean depths of the ocean are just as barren and hostile to us as space. Yeah. So I was growing up with Star Trek, and all this were out there, and all this. If you had, yeah, uh, um, voyage to bottom, if you had some submarine type things, but this one really brought it home in the way that Cameron shot it and everything, with how dark it is and how, you know, just oh, that, mm -hmm. that drop at the end, all the way down, where he's. Just oh like, yeah, you're like wow, yeah. That was one of the work. only other things you can argue that he did that was half-ass original too, because otherwise, <laughs> pretty much yeah. the rest of his stuff is. At the end, yeah. when that ship comes up and all those other warships are laying on their keels and stuff, yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, it was good. I like this one. All right, anyone else? Elsewise, we'll go on. All right, we're drowning. We're drowning. Your body will remember. And I'm like that, I was sitting. I remember sitting there going, "I think that's dumb," but the, re the rest of it, I thought it was fine. Uh, this is Tom, and uh, that's the end there. We've got Tom's number five. Um, an alien, I believe, actually is Tom Howard the Duck. Well, since I have like three or four copies of this movie, I figured I'd better put it on there. And he yeah. is one of the coolest aliens there ever was. He's a uh, duck in a world he didn't make. That's right. <laughs> I, I, I like the cigar. Uh, the, the images in the movie posters with him coming out of the egg with the cigar, I thought were great. Mm -hmm. Oh, Howard. No, it's a fun movie. I mean, at the time it came out, I don't know if people knew what to expect. Um, it's not exactly the comic, but yet it is at the same time. <laughs> it's kind of weird in that respect. It's like they kind of went so close to the line, danced on it a few times, and then just like, no, we're not going to quite go over that line. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, it's just one of those movies, and then the second half of the film turns into this, weird bombastic sci-fi action flick with the the overlord and <laughs> jeffrey jones and all that kind of stuff doing his bit and i mean the movie itself is goofy as hell but i mean howard the duck is iconic i mean who doesn't know who howard the duck is uh and uh regardless of uh what lucas may think and some other people said at the time the film came out i think howard is quite an achievement in special effects Considering the the amount of work that went into him between being a puppet, yeah. uh, an animatronic radio controlled puppet, uh, a guy in a suit with a radio controlled head, to a stunt guy in a suit, to what have you, ever whatever it means they had, because I'm sure Gary knows that they probably built God knows how many different Howards to do the many different things they had to do. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's funny because when George was asked uh, around the time he did the special editions if he would ever go back and do any of his other movies, and he's like, well. Maybe I'd do something with Howard the Duck. <laughs> and they go, well, what would you do? What would you do to change it? And he goes, well, probably do a different voice. Wow. <laughs> That's about all he said. It's like, so he really threw that guy under the bus. It's like, Damn. so of all the movie, of all the things that you would change, it's that. Okay. <laughs> it's like, that's like the least of the movie's problems, but all right. So, yeah, I don't know if anybody else is a semi fan or uh, much I'm like Mac and me. It's one of, of the movie. best, worst movies ever in a way, but yeah. I but, love yeah. this movie. And it's got the duck tits in it too, which is hilarious. <laughs> I'm yeah, such a lucky girl. <laughs> I'm in love. <clears throat> Leia Thompson in bed. Oh Howard my the god! Duck. Oh, what that was something else. Duck that they do in bed. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you lucky little shit. Right. I'm so <laughs> jealous of Howard the Duck. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny know, is that's the scene that everybody kind of keyed in on, especially parents, right? Because yeah, they're right. like, how can you have this kids movie where they're having sex <laughs> and shit? It's like, yeah, definitely. Were you going to say film. talks? I was just saying it was definitely a different film. Uh, it it was a little, as you say, a little bit edgy. It wasn't exactly a family film. It didn't know where to be in audience wise when it came out. It just didn't know where to be, and and it's one of the I, you know it's ahead of its time. I think if it had waited 10, 15 years to do this film with better CGI and stuff like that, maybe it would have been better. But then again, it wouldn't be the classic that it is now. You know, I don't think it's so much. The, yeah, I was going to say, I don't think it was so much the CGI aspect or anything like that or having the special effect. I think it was really because they didn't take advantage of PG-13 at the time. Yeah, this is a, yeah, still a PG-rated film. Yeah. 
And if they had just pushed it just that little bit over the line, I don't think it would have had the stigma. I think it would have hit the adult audience that it should have hit in the first place. I mean, it, people forget this is the first Marvel movie. Yeah, right. I guess it is. Mm -hmm. And I think you're right on that PG-13 thing. I mean, yeah. they were toy sales. This came out during the Toy Sales is King, Merch is King era, right? And you're not getting yep. the kind of toy sales now that you are, that you did back then. Yeah. So they're trying to sell to Christmas. That All this stuff is geared towards selling the toys at Christmas, all that stuff. Star Wars came in and changed everything in how they did all that um, and mass marketed. So, yeah. And Marvel was in a, I think Marvel was in a downturn at this time as far as money-wise and all that kind of stuff. So I Yeah, think, they were going bankrupt in the 80s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's kind of like well, George yeah. needs to own the rights to this for since the seventies, actually. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing is, some people say that that's why the movie suffered because it's funny because he gets the brunt of it. But the the common story that goes around was by the time he got it around to making this movie, he had lost all the interest, so most of it kind of fell on to uh, William and uh, Hayek and his wife or whatever. To work on and shit and i think it was wasn't it his like directorial debut too yeah like on top of it all so like yeah it was like and they weren't even all that interested in the property it was always george's thing and he just kind of fell out of interest in it but they just yeah it was something they'd been working on for so long that it just finally it, it, that's why it kind of feels like a mixture of ideas in a weird way and even though it hangs heavy on george's shoulders now i think he had very little to actually do with the movie at the end of the day i don't mm -hmm. think he really did all that much because you watch like the making of it and shit and he, he's not as involved in it as he was like with willow or some of the other stuff like on willow right. he's everywhere he's constantly on the set breathing down on howard's neck and all this shit it's like right uh it, but on this one it's like it seems like he's kind of distant and he wasn't really even doing anything really all that much at this point either which is weird but outside well, of working with ilm hasn't, but, hasn't screwed this one up what was that thank god kennedy hasn't screwed this one up yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Is she even one of the producers? I don't think she has anything to do with this. But she does. Oh, the Lucasfilm does own it now. You're right. But uh, or they still own it or whatever. But yeah. But it's through okay. Universal, so I don't know how much say they have over that one. But yeah, they probably don't even want to acknowledge it. Well, For as much as is it funny. keeps getting re released on video too, which is weird. It's not, so it must be. It must have. There must be something to it. It must sell. Because I've got three copies myself, so it's been released on, you know, regular yeah, DVD, Blu-ray, 4K. What was that, Andy? You have three copies of everything. Not necessarily, but this one <laughs> I just happened to. No, but, most uh, he's got four. Most I got four, <laughs> that's right. Well, let's get back into the super chats here because we've got a few before we move on to our next number. Uh, we got the super uh, pooper sticker from six again. Thank you so much for that. Nick the Greek says Orion Slave Girls for the win. Oh, we'll see if they show up on somebody's list. Jaffo became a new member. Thank you for that, Jaffo. Let me see if I can see what level you are. Because uh, we usually do a little video for that. You're on Midnight's Edge After Dark. I cannot see the level now, so I apologize for that. So we'll just do... Let's see here. Let's do Oscar winning puppy. We ain't done Oscar winning puppy in a while. Jaffo is an Oscar. That's an Oscar winning puppy if I ever saw one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Kitty Bears also sent us a super, uh, pooper sticker. Thank you for that, Kitty Bear. Brian Keith also became a new member. Thank you for that. Let's see here. Let's give you a board corgi. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, then we've got Joe Pat 87 who says, Howard the Duck was the first Marvel movie. Wow, does that suck? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well there was some tv movies and some other serials and stuff like that back in the day but yes uh, howard the duck was technically the first marvel feature film uh webster uh, jason webster sends in australian tenants as my top five are uh aliens uh number five from independence day uh number four from the abyss number three from et number two the xenomorphs and aliens and number one the alien in thing there you go. Yeah, I, I would expect a lot of lists to look like this, but uh, we're weird. So we're very <laughs> you'll have weird. to see <laughs> what happens here as we get back into the swing of the list. Uh, we Oh, we just got uh, at the Congo level. Holy crap, Stark of Iron. 
Congo. That's a rarity. We got a Congo video for that. Where's it at here? Stop eating my sesame cake. Stop eating my sesame cake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I miss him. Tim uh, Curry was funny. He's he's still with us, but uh, he's not in the greatest of shape. But yeah, yeah, that's I miss him on on stage. I got oh, to gotcha, see Spam a lot, gotcha. just as he had to come away from it. So I could see it with David Hyde oh. Pierce and Hank Azaria and all that stuff, but they had somebody else playing uh, his part. And mm. but it's still a phenomenal experience. But yeah, being able to see Tim Curry on stage at Broadway would have been a highlight. He can make me. anything better, even he Congo. Can. He really can. I, I love, I love Clue. I will watch that movie over and over and over again. So. <laughs> what do you mean, even Congo? Congo was fantastic. Yeah. Ugly Congo. woman. Amy, pretty. <laughs> I like Congo, but I acknowledge that most people don't. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> All right, let's go back to the list. Now, this is mine again. Um, the Aliens Among Us mm -hmm. in They Live. So this came out in 1988. I uh, got to see this in theaters. Um, and Rowdy Roddy Piper, uh, wrestling was... Put really on big. the glasses! Exactly. <laughs> I'm here to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of bubble gum. Uh, great film, had a real twist at the end that I didn't expect. I always like films that do that. Um, who would have thought that uh, these aliens were actually the ruling class elites of the world uh, that we're seeing right now? So they actually... Brahma has a pair of these glasses. He puts it on. He sees all the BS that's going on in the world. But, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Rowdy Rowdy Piper, one of my favorites uh, wrestling, as we knew it at the time, started in the city I grew up in. And uh, a lot of those guys lived around where we were and uh, got to know them. Rowdy Rowdy Piper um, was a genuine guy to me and, uh, yeah, liked what he did in here. thought it was a great uh, film. And uh, these aliens scared the bejesus out of me and all the stuff there because I couldn't think of anything... Yeah worse than being controlled and uh, and not knowing it uh, from there. So this movie, like, what was it, 18, 19 years old at that time, scared the ever-living crap out of me and really solidified me as, as more of a libertarian. <laughs> okay. But yeah, love the film. It's a good pick. All right. yep. Yeah, I love it. All right. Great fight cool. scenes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of stuff in there. When he, and he gets punched in the balls. It's just, uh, anyway. He's just, uh, there's just, I, I, we, I could do a whole hour on this movie. But, uh, all right, I'll move on. So next up, Brahma's um, something great. The four mix from Ender's Game. More uh, bugs. Yeah, more bugs. Yeah, I think uh, maybe you need a can of Raid. Yeah. So the reason I like the four mix, I mean, they're barely in, the actual movie besides the queen at the end and uh kind of the thing that i like about the bug type aliens is the hive mind stuff and the thing that's interesting about the formix is basically the queen is reading what's happening the whole time as her whole um you know whole race is getting wiped out and she can't do anything about it but try to make ender a little bit more sympathetic to where when he does find the egg he'll do something with it rather than become a complete genocider. So I think the four mix are interesting. I wish they had done some more movies off of this series. Mm -hmm. And I think they, did more they books. tried to do a good movie. Oh, there's tons of books. Yeah. yeah. There's like 17 books. A very they, quality. All, they go into, yeah, right. they're all, they're all interesting. Some of them are a little bit weird, but uh, yeah, it's uh it's a very interesting series if you've never read it. And the, the, movie does a pretty good job of getting the main point of the story across from that book specifically. There were some really good performances in that film. Uh, from yeah. There. So, yeah. I, I thought this was a good pick. It's the one I considered because uh, I do like the film, like the books. And as you say, there's some of those books that are way out there, but it's like this series, the Ender's Game series, almost, it's kind of like reading the Dune books. By yep. Frank Herbert. They, some of them really get weird into that well, real science fiction kind of stuff. And that's why I don't consider Star Wars to be science fiction. I consider that to be science fantasy. Science fiction is the real 
deep down kind of mind screw stuff to me. Um, yeah. But, I mean, well, and kind of like Dune, it also Ender's game takes place over a vast amount of time as well. Right. Right. It's not just the, well, the series, not this, not this book itself, but yeah. right. Yeah. Right. So, oh, good one. So yeah, the four, anyone else I've actually never seen it. The movie or read the books? No, neither. If you have no idea what happens in it, you should watch it before you can get spoiled on it. Yeah. yeah. I might one of these days. I don't it's actually own it. I mean, like tonight. <laughs> right. Well, in today's rating system, it's probably a 7 out of 10. Yeah, it wasn't well received. No. But it is but, a I mean, good movie. It's a heck of a lot better than, well, the Marvels. I, I, I'd, I'd recommend the book far more than the movie. And, oh, I, yeah. and out, of the, out of the series, the oh, first yeah. two books are probably the strongest, mm-hmm. I thought. But that's a whole other conversation. So the second it kind of goes off the rails. The for, Speaker for the Dead, and then I think was either the third one was Children of the Mind or Xenocide. I forget which one it was. It was one of the two. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah Speaker, Speaker for the Dead was actually, I mean, it was such a departure from the first one and an extension of everything. I thought it was a great book. Yep. I thought it was so, good. Yeah, All we right. can move to the next. So Scribe Lights, there, uh, number it five. Wednesday. It's on yeah. sale at Best Buy. There you go. Greg yes. from The Last Starfighter. I almost hit this one on too. I love this movie. Yeah, I this uh, the, the, the remake. A couple, a couple of my choices are kind of interconnected in my mind for a couple of reasons, but I'll talk about that as we go. But in particular, Greg... Um, I, I'm pretty sure I am. Mean, somebody's probably going to correct me, but one of two things uh, scarred my brain for reptilian characters by the time I saw this movie. The first one, uh, and, and again, I, I, I might be off on my timelines here, but uh, uh, Snake Man from Dream Quest, Dreamscape, pardon me, Dream, Dreamscape. Dreamscape, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely as a kid scared the hell out of me. And also uh, the uh, invaders from V. Oh V! Uh, oh yeah. yeah. So and so see when her so seeing, jaw came open to swallow the yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So Ugh. so so yeah. reptilian humanoid things. By the time I saw Last Starfighter, I was pretty much like no. And then of course Grig comes along, and my I remember my first reaction seeing was like, oh no, scary bad guy. And then he's like laughing and like at like <sighs> they're like like that really breathy laugh and everything. And he's always jovial and just a really nice guy. And I was like, oh, so not every lizard person is a bad person. It was one of those sort of like childhood lessons of, you know, don't judge a book by its cover kind of things. It sounds very basic. And of course, that was portrayed a little bit in the film. But especially at that point with my sci-fi uh, pedigree, it really hit home. And uh, yeah, as a, as, a, as a wingman, as a friend, as somebody that you wanted to see uh, more of in the film, I, I, I love Grig. Yeah, Centauri was pretty awesome in that movie. As well. Yeah, he, he was too. Yeah, music man, pedigree. yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was great. Hey, Scribe, you mentioned uh, the Snake Man from Dream, yes. uh, Dreamscape. Yep. Oh, no. So way. I have a. Um, no. This is a maquette of one of the um, stop motion animated uh, frames that they used to transform oh, David Patrick man. Kelly into. Um, uh, from the from the snake creature. I think it's from him to the snake creature, or from the snake creature to him. But, wow. Wow. Um, yeah. Every time was, I every time I see David Patrick Kelly in a movie, I'm like Snake Man, and like I, I say, he was, he was in John Wick for about three seconds, and I was like Snake Man's in John Wick. Right. Yeah, I saw this. That's had great. to pick it up. Yeah, Love Dream Dream movie. Dreamscape is just I, that's a terrifying. Movie that's yeah, absolutely, actually horrifying movie. And, yeah, but it's great. It's it was so good at the time. Yeah, yeah. I can't uh, can't recommend that one highly. Anyway, yeah. So yeah, Grig, uh, just just the first in my list of amazing uh alien companion characters um and uh yeah def- definitely a character that stuck with me because of my uh my, my fear of the reptile man i love grig i love the last starfighter no yeah. a great yeah. great movie great movie aren't they All supposed right. to be doing like, hasn't there been a rumored remake forever and ever and ever yeah but i think it's been yeah kind of just, that was like yeah. years ago now yeah yeah okay I don't know what's been going on. They could do the next Starfighter with his brother that he left behind. Oh, yeah, there you go. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, he's all drunk. Or even by now his son or something like that. Yeah, he's in that trailer park, you know, still running things, and then he comes back down and, you know, 
Picks him up, turns him into a starfighter. Wasn't there somebody? I, I'm trying to remember. Defeated. Wasn't there somebody like who became famous later? They had like a three second in, uh, appearance in the beginning of that movie. I'm trying to remember who it was. Somebody was like at the very front of uh, Last Starfighter, and it was somebody mm. who became much bigger later. I don't know. I'm, I'm blanking. Anyway, uh, pardon, uh, yeah. pardon law. Nope, no worries. All right, let's keep moving. Gary's up next with a phenomenal film. Yes. From Galaxy Quest. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so what's the actor's name? Enrico. Enrico something. He was in Just Shoot Me and yeah. a couple of other things. Mm. Yeah. Very funny. Oh, I can't oh. remember who came up with the concept of how they walk. Uh, but you know how the, the human walking gait is, you know, you swing your right hand forward when your left foot is moving forward. Well, they just switched it around their right hand is moving up with their right leg. And that's why they walk all funny. I, this, this was so <laughs> funny. <laughs> this was, uh, this was comic genius. The whole movie's comic genius. It's brilliant. But this alien character is, he stands out, man. Uh, there's never been anything like it. There won't ever be anything like it after it. So definitely yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah, I'm fearful for that uh, revival sequel thing they got coming up here. I didn't know they were doing that. How the hell yeah. are they doing that without Alan Rickman? I don't, I don't know. No way. Absolutely no yeah. way. No. It, you want to, you know, there's they have the original f- cast at least with. with yeah, or, maybe. But I mean, it yeah. is Sans him as far as I understand. But yeah, so we'll see. Okay, well, geez, that's going to be There are so many things Rickman. that are just perfect the way they are, and this is one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they'll get Matt Berry to play his son or something like that. Mm. That might work. I just the, with all the Roman candles and stuff guiding them in and all at the end. Yeah, and they go slide in. <laughs> Another <was> shipmate. It's <laughs> <laughs> the first time I've seen Sam Rockwell and anything Fucking was in this film. Sam Rockwell is so good in this. Oh, so good in this and Moon. Oh, you guys mind if I sit oh, next to you in science not autographs? Right when they start having sex and the guy from. Uh, Monk, yeah, his tech sergeant Jen. Yeah, yeah. Jen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how long did they call Sam Rockwell guy? Because he never had a name. <laughs> Come on, I never had a name. Yeah. Uh, what a great film! Yes, we could talk about this all night. Yes, too. we could, but we won't. Mm-hmm. Great, great movie. Andy's up next, and Andy's oh! number four is Cockblock. So we'll go on to the next one. For those who don't know, that means that somebody else has it higher on mm-hmm. their list. Won't be too long. Won't be too long. He returns the favor too. Oh no! Uh, this is it. A great pick. They say and, he's uh, got yeah, to go, 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 Godzilla. Ooh. Monster Zero. Well, I mean, this has got to be. This is my favorite Godzilla monster that he fights, mm-hmm. uh, and it's a great little plot that happens between. Godzilla versus Mothra through uh, Ghidorah to Monster Zero, where we learn that, and they kind of carried the fact that uh, Ghidorah is supposed to be from outer space into the new movies too, um, that basically, yeah, he was sent to us by the Venetians, and we learn later on that they tricked us by sending him there first without us knowing it, and then they are like, oh, Ghidorah's getting us, Ghidorah's killing us, so we, we, need, we need Godzilla and Rodan and all these guys, and then we send them to outer space, just so we can be left defenseless when <laughs> Ghidorah returns. <laughs> it's a great little plot that's played out over three movies. And it's, you know, it's just a, this character is just a great, I mean, he's clearly, you know, Godzilla's most formidable foe or whatever you want to call it. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, he, he's always a welcome fight for right. Godzilla. Yeah. It's a great film. It's a great pick of all of the ones that Godzilla fights. You're right. Ghidorah is one. This is uh, is one. Go. <laughs> well, yeah, he is one of the, he's the one. He sorry, one. the Planet okay. X people. Yeah, but the Venetians <laughs> yeah. are the good people. That's right. Yeah, it's been a couple of years since I've seen it, so I apologize that planet about that. X. Yeah, Ghidorah and uh, Monster Zero are the same thing, aren't they? Or are they two different things? I can't remember. Thought they were the same thing. Interestingly enough, if you are using proper grammar, uh, the adjective for something from Venus would be venereal. <laughs> <laughs> so again i apologize I'm, I'm probably getting things a little squawked up in my head because it's been a few years since i've seen the movies but yeah i think that's where i'm from <laughs> yeah i think we all are 
<laughs> it's yeah, a venereal be. disease. <laughs> I see some people kind of correcting me in the chat, but yeah, I'll get where I'm coming from though. Uh, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> Mrs. Flu's like, God, I hope not. <laughs> like, yeah, no, no, no. It's old school. Happening. Penicillin does the trick. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, it's like me and I'm Wicked Witch of the East. I'm melting. I'm melting. All right. Going on. Uh, this is uh, my number three pick was also picked by somebody else. Uh, higher up, so uh, we'll skip past that. My horrible disappointment. Uh, on to a great pick of three <laughs> phenomenal aliens in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy from Brahma. Yeah. Uh, so Zaphod, Ford Prefect, and Slarty Bart Fast. Um, Love Slarty yeah, Bart I, Fast. My first introduction to Hitchhikers was the movie. And yeah, I, I realized there are issues with it since I have read all the books at this point, but I still loved the movie when it came out. Um, and Sam Rockwell as uh, Zaphod was probably one of my favorite roles I've ever seen him in, if, if not one of my favorite comedic roles altogether. Most Def as Ford Prefect was uh, a pretty, pretty excellent pick for that. And then, of course, Bill Nye as Slarty Bardfast was hilarious. So, yeah, love Hitchhiker's Guide. Yeah, the only one I don't agree with so much is most deaf. That was like one yeah. of my least favorite picks. And it had nothing to do with his race or anything like that. It was just, he just didn't most fit deaf. the art. Yeah, it's just, yeah. I, mean, that's the thing. I, I didn't get that. You know? Yeah. I got the other ones, but that yeah. one I didn't get. But you know what? But he did have some uh, okay comedy during it. He did. I thought he was okay. Oh, well, good for script. what they were that's trying fine. to do. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So. yeah. I mean, but. Terry Jones, when he was talking about making this film, the only reason they got it made is because um, he had just died. Not Terry Jones, but. Um, oh, um, now you made me forget his name. I know. I was like, I've, I've read all of his books like 12, 15 Douglas times. Adams? Douglas Adams. Douglas Adams. Oh, so he yeah. was, you know, Douglas Adams had died, and that's the only reason they really made the film. They knew they were only going to get one shot at it. So we couldn't do Hitchhiker's Guide and Restaurant at the End of the Universe. And so long, things for all the fish. He couldn't do all those, right? Um, so they did this and mashed things together and gave it a happy ending. And and he's like, I'm only going to be able to do this, and off they go. And didn't uh, so long and thanks for all the fish. Wasn't that nominated for an Oscar for song? For the song? Uh, I don't know if it was. Uh, I don't think I can't so. Remember, there I'm was something sure. in there. With, yeah, but um, I, it is one of the more popular things that I'm sure if they remade it again, it would probably be ad adopted into it. Yeah, um, but yeah. It which just, speaking of, I know Hulu was supposed to have been making a series of it for a long while. But right. uh, my other problem was the guy who plays Ford in the original one. Um, oh, I got it here. Hang on, uh, David Dixon. Like oh, yeah. his portrayal of the character is much like most deaf kind of just comes off as a drunk idiot most of the time. Mm -hmm. Toward David Ford Ford always acts. Yeah. yeah, he always because Ford is always like one step ahead of everything. It feels like. Like, he's always, he never really has, like, this, he doesn't, like, the thing with most stuff is he brought, like, this worry wart kind of thing to the character, and it's like, that's not Ford. No. He doesn't worry about anything, really. Ford's most been like all over the energy. galaxy. Yeah, yeah the nervous energy knows. I didn't care for, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not any of that. And keep in mind, this was my first exposure to anything Hitchhikers, so... Mm -hmm. Oh, Martin His Freeman does a pretty good job. Oh, no, good job. no. I, I'm not trying to like yeah. knock the and, pick here at all, Brahma. Yeah. I'm just oh, no, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I loved it. And I even drugged the, the kids and Sam everything at the time to the movie, and it was just like, yeah, they didn't care yeah. for it. But I was Alan Rickman is, it. Alan Rickman is the robot. And, That's uh, the best part. Um, and then, of course, uh, who who was it that played Hava Kavula? Um, Malkovich. John Malkovich. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic casting. So, yeah. And there was a lot of stuff that they could do, and and Amagrathia, and I don't know that kind of stuff. So, but when Slarty Bartfast came Shit, out, is it that drag was the kids, not drug perfect the kids. casting <laughs> for Slarty Bartfast. Yeah, Bill opinion. Nye is Slarty Bartfast. Yeah, was hilarious. and I thought they my name is Bartfast. not important. <laughs> what is it? Slarty I tried Bartfast? to make some what new fans. It's all right, Slarty Bartfast. <laughs> I even what drugged is... the kids. It didn't help. Yeah. All right. Well, let's but go on to the next one then. Yeah. Yeah, I have a feeling we may talk, talk about, about that one again. Yeah, and here's my number three, uh, Scribes mm -hmm. number three as well. Um, uh, 
Yeah. Enemy mine. This yeah. This, this is such a great movie. The performances between these two, you know, enemies trapped in the foxhole kind of thing. Um, the performance by Louis Gossett Jr. through that makeup still holds up today. Is just so, yeah. so, um, just so moving. Like it's a, this is like bromance the movie and it's so good and it has such a great message. And again, when I was a kid, you know, my, 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 my lizard man uh, fear totally obliterated once more by this movie. The other thing too, I just want to mention is that when I was young and I didn't really, couldn't really tell the difference between movies and things for some reason. And I, I, I still like this head cannon. Uh, this movie takes place before last starfighter and right. Jerry is of the same race as Greg. They and do that's look a lot they, alike, don't they? Yeah, a, a little bit. I mean, not, not, not so much once you, it, it's, it's a lot more different now that I, you know, look at it with adult eyes rather than with little kid eyes. But uh, I always thought that like, the the Drax made peace with the humans after this, and then that the last Starfighter was the evolution from there. I that's it's, it's completely head cannon, but that's what I thought. But uh, now the the performances here just you 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 believe each one of them in their situation. The fact that one of them is a lizard man space alien falls away pretty quick because of the relationship that's established and the uh, the chemistry between them the the two of them. Um, but just as a um, Again, one of those don't judge your book, the book by its cover sort of lessons as a child for me. Uh, this is a, I mean, it still holds up the, the, the sets are kind of cheesy looking now in comparison, but it really, it, it could almost be looked at more like a stage play because it's so strongly based around the characters and their interactions mm -hmm. that, uh, yeah, it's, it's just it's such a great movie today, even, uh, even all these years later. Yeah. This was my father's favorite film. It was a book, right? Hmm. And um, at the end of the film, what happens? What transpires during this and, and, and all that stuff? This was 1985. Berlin Wall hadn't fallen yet. Hmm. There was a lot of stuff going on. My dad grew up during the time when duck and cover and they, okay, we could die tomorrow. Russians press a button, you know, whatever. And um, this was a, a movie that, and just story that showed hope to people that were totally opposite is to realize how difficult it was for Russians and Americans to get together and, and think at that time, the Russians came up with all their space program stuff and everything in a, in a completely different way for the most part until they started doing the espionage real well uh, and stealing stuff from the Americans, but they would find a different way to do things. And that's why we use a lot of their rocket technology as opposed to our own, because theirs was better uh, from there. So it's just a different thought process with that. And this movie shows that and shows that you can overcome that. Um, and you've got two phenomenal actors. And yeah, I mean, some of the stuff doesn't help, but it's 1985. You know, mm -hmm. you're doing a sci-fi film in 1985 that you know is not going to be Star Wars. But people are hungry for sci-fi and this is a this is a good film and it's a great message and it's two very powerful actors yeah, the only uh, the yeah. only effect that needed to hold up was the makeup on lewis gaza jr and that's it still it. does yeah yeah Every, everything does. else could be could be uh, waved away or whatever but yeah you, if you don't yeah. believe the performance out of jerry then it doesn't work but it it absolutely nails it and still looks great today yeah it's a good one. Well, and you feel yeah, for their yeah. relationship, right? And their dependency mm -hmm. on each other. And what mm -hmm. it does is take, you know, one of those great concepts that's in most bottle episodes of a Western or uh, shit. There was even a Planet of the Apes episode that had the same plot where you always have a good guy and a bad guy and they get trapped in a scenario where they have to work together to get out of it, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So they took that that concept and they expanded upon it. And, and as you said, it's based upon a book. But uh, in the film, it just works so brilliantly and you get the stages of their their relationship and as the movie goes along you know when when you find out jerry's uh condition right. you know things change real quickly and it 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 does it progresses in a really touching and emotional way that you follow along with this movie and you're just sucked in from beginning to end and Amelia Clark, I'm really sorry you don't know what this movie is but enemy mine is a great film that was directed by wolfgang peterson but I, it, for some reason, it has not gotten 
a really good release in recent years, and mostly probably because Disney owns it now, and they probably don't even know it exists. Oh, Disney owns this? Oh, oh yeah. no. Well, it's a Fox oh. feature. Oh, yeah, right. It's a Fox oh, film. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. And I have an import Blu-ray of it, and I think it got like a real limited Blu-ray release here in the U.S., and that was it once. Uh, and I'm not even sure about that, but the... You know, I know he used to DVD, want Disney to take been over kind of stuff. obscure for a while, yeah. He used to want them to take over stuff because you knew they would put the money into it. And now you just know they're going to destroy it, whatever it is. It, it, there's a taint to Disney now. Yeah, there it's is. Just certain, and this, this movie is about human or love. That's what this movie is about. The camaraderie and the love between people who have been in a situation and survived it there's a connection there a closeness there you know it's not brother sister it's not husband wife it's not any of that kind of stuff right it's not sibling it's what you had two people in war and they survived and came out and it's that kind of thing after and it's a it's good performance on the other side too Lou Gossett does a great job but um, oh, now I forgot his name. One of those nights. You know Quaid. why they won't Quaid. release Quaid. this movie now? Because your Mickey Mouse goes is stupid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, the other thing I want to mention, I, I don't want to give too much weight to Mickey Mouse. Sorry, I didn't mean <laughs> No, but the uh, the just the, the the fact that they it it seemed to me, and you know, maybe I'm looking through the rose colored glasses, they spent a considerable seemingly amount of time to develop an entirely separate culture and language and religion and so on yeah, for Jerry's yeah, character. But... So there was, you had the clash beyond just not being able to understand each other on a linguistic mm -hmm. level or on a visual level, mm. but there was a distinct cultural difference, which added to the whole, you know, clash mm -hmm. of these two people having to come to terms with each other. Well, and it grew out of just right a need to communicate with each other, right? Yeah, that right. too. Yeah. Yeah. Survive. Mm -hmm. You know, to survive, survive and you got to survive. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's scribe uh, boy, I could talk about this forever, but that's sure, that yeah. whole American Russian thing, right? Yep. The Russians were forced to have to have their women fight alongside them. Pilots, fighter pilots. They have fighter women fighter pilots over a hundred shot, you know, kills and all this stuff and everything from there. That was something that, you know, Americans still to this day aren't gonna put their women in the combat zones like that. It's just yeah. different. Based on what you yeah. need to survive, but you, I, spent, a little, I could keep going. Yeah, I could keep going. I better stop. <laughs> yeah, I, no, mean, I was going to say we spent a little bit more time than I, we normally would on it, but this I think this movie deserves to be highlighted just because it's gone into obscurity so badly yeah. Yeah. for no other reason than just whatever. If rights, you can't find the film, stuff, yeah. find the book. All right, audio book, whatever. Just it's a good story that I think we need now. We needed it then. And we need it now. Yep. So, all right. I'll I move agree. on before I keep talking. No, that's okay. We're just on a time yeah. limit, unfortunately. Yeah, guys. Gary, um, this <coughs> is a phenomenal pick, and this was Andy's number four. So, <coughs> <coughs> all right. <coughs> well, Jim Brown is so You know, I, I've, I've always dreamed of these guys showing up and destroying our planet. So maybe <laughs> it'll, maybe it'll happen one day. Just put a big brain on a human skull and put some goofy <laughs> eyeballs in it and. Give them a ray gun with a bubble on their head. Yeah, that works. Um, I used to have the, the Topps card series when I was a kid, too. One of the most visually striking aliens ever. Yes. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Uh, but it's fucking hilarious. Yes. It's really funny. You know, when I saw this movie when I was a kid, I liked it. But I watched it recently uh, when <laughs> as more of an adult. And uh, I, I it's, this is hilarious. This movie's really funny. I love how the humans are just in such denial of what's happening and they keep getting just blasted. <laughs> it's so great. You know, like Martin Short comes into the president. He says, don't worry. It was all a misunderstanding. And the president's like, oh, thank God. You know, they're just <laughs> frying everybody. <laughs> it's fucking great. What a, uh, <laughs> what a fantastic movie. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's just too really bad it got like released so close to Independence Day. I I think that's the only reason it never got the attention it deserved. Yeah, you know? I like mm -hmm. it a lot better than Independence Day. Independence Day is cool. It's a great movie, but this is uh, this is so funny. Nostalgia fun, too. Jim Brown was really an ensemble movie. cast. It oh, yeah. A ton of yeah. people yeah. in it. Michael J. Yeah, Fox. Huge names. Jack Nicholson playing two parts. Um, yeah. Oh, who's the guy? I think guy it was one of Jack Vegas Black's instance. first parts, too, wasn't it? Yeah, that's Jack right. Black was yeah. in it. And you had uh, Sarah Jessica Parker and... Uh, 
unfortunately. Matthew yeah, what's his name in it? Yeah, but what happens to her is fine. They put her on a dog. Yeah, yeah, they put Pierce her head Brosnan. on a dog. Pierce Brosnan, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Andy, yeah. you're uh, you're up, buddy. Yeah, you're number four. You're muted, Andy's buddy. Muted. You're muted again. I think it might be uh, some of Tim Burton's best work. Yeah. That's Indeed. saying something. I'm, well, this was so. Yeah, it has a different. <clears throat> it doesn't have the same color palette. Everything else he does is kind of black and gray. Um, yeah. This is very. Uh, it's. I don't know if there's anybody else that would have the kind of sense of humor that would make this work. Um, yeah. And 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 be able to get away with it. So, yeah, I think this is uh, this is very creative and very uh, very entertaining. Yeah, I think it holds up. To, it, it's still funny today if we were to go and watch mm -hmm. on that. But good film. Yep. Good pick. Um, all right. Um, going on Moving to the next one. Yeah, this will be uh, Andy's number three is E.T. E e oh, mm. this might have been a very popular film at one point. Despite the fact that it introduced Reese's Pieces, which I just don't care for. Disgusting. Oh, Reese's Cups. Um, great movie, a lot of fun, very touching, heartwarming. I think I was like uh, 13 or so. No, well, what, nineteen eighty? Yeah, about 13 when this came out. <clears throat> um, big hit. Everybody, it was huge. Um, it was, it was huge. Uh, <laughs> everybody had a great time with it and it, it really, um, uh, launched Blue, Drew Barrymore into the stratosphere with, uh, all the stuff that she did, um. Uh, but yeah, this was, uh, this was pretty cool. Is that definitely different because all the aliens up until that point, it was a very, very different look than anything else. Not just a different look, but you also, is one of the few times you had where the alien wasn't evil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was well, endearing, was naked. friendly. That's the thing we need to talk about. He's, he's on so many registered sex offender lists on other planets. <laughs> They kind of ignored that fact, and they probably shouldn't let him hang out with kids. But that's another conversation <laughs> for another day. Maybe they'll make him president. <laughs> oh, oh, oh there it is. is. Well, if you only sniff the kids instead of using his finger, then maybe. <laughs> but, uh, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's an alien that wasn't smart enough to stick close to the ship, and they left him. <laughs> All right. So I, I don't. I saw this. As a very yeah, jaded maybe he's child. a little special or something. Who knows? Yeah, I saw this as a jaded child in the back of my dad's pickup at the drive-in movie as part of a Close Encounters of Third Kind ET double feature, right? So this is back in the day when we were in this '74 pickup. My sister and I were asleep in the back. There was no tailgate, and Dad would drive on the highway at 75 miles an hour to get home. Okay, that's the okay life there. I'm sitting there going, "This is the dumbest freaking alien I've ever heard of." He, oh, I go then, and they just run off and leave him. I, we're just gonna leave him on this planet. Whatever happens, happens. And I just, I, I remember leaving this thinking, none of that would happen. And my mom looks at me and goes, "You totally missed the whole thing, the movie." My sister's <laughs> crying. No, Elliot, he's so great. And I just realized, oh yeah, I need to know my audience before I open. My so I ruined DT for my sister. That was uh -oh. an ass. Oh well. Well, that Neil that Diamond being... song. <laughs> huh? That Neil Diamond song was everywhere too. Oh yeah, it was. Turn on your hot light. <laughs> <sighs> well, Neil Diamond. I mean, Neil Diamond. You know. <sighs> All right. I knew ET would show up on here. Yeah. One way or you, another. You, the, that, that's Tom's sexy voice telling me, all right, it's time to move on, ladies. Yeah, we got to kind of make up for some lost time here. Here you go. This is all a right, Frank the Pug. Yeah. <laughs> Love this one. I'm glad you picked this. I mean, this has got to be inspired. Fuck it. Just, I mean, you're watching the movie. I mean, it already has enough goofy shit in it, right? And then they go up to this guy who, you you know, they know what they're doing. They have that weird looking dude who, who looks like the Crypt Keeper. You're like, clearly that's the alien. And Will Smith starts talking to him. And 
Frank's like, no, down here, you moron, or whatever. You know, like, <laughs> oh, he grabs this. He grabs him and starts shaking him up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love Frank the Pug. Of course, he's uh, voiced by uh, Tim Blaney, who also you may know as uh, number five. Um, but yeah, uh, and, uh, some other uh, great voice work. But, I didn't uh, know that. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he uh, he said he got the voice because he goes, you just kind of look at him and he's a pug. So he just kind of make his face start looking like a pug. And a voice just started coming out like this. you just scrunch his face up and it just kind of came out like that's funny he's like they worked on a few but like no that's the one that just kind of stuck first he thought about doing i think he said like a british or a scottish accent or something like that but it just didn't work and he just he's just like no i just got to go with your instincts on that so yeah no frank in men in black is uh one of the highlights of the of the films and sadly he's not in the third film although give him a nice little tribute uh, the third one there, but yeah. Wasn't there a fourth film? I, I don't know what you're talking about. No, never heard. It's of it. like Highlander Two. It doesn't exist. Huh? It doesn't what? exist. Highlander no. what? Yeah. Highland, there was only one Highlander film. Just like there can be uh, only there's only one. three um, Indiana Jones films. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah. There we go. This is a great pick. I'm glad you picked it. So, all right, we're flipping over to number twos. Um, this was my number two. Uh, Vogan. I love the Vogan. Yes. Oh, just the explanation of who they are. Yes. And <laughs> they are the administrators of the galaxy, and I need everything in quadruplicate, all that stuff, and everything. It's just, and in the film, <clears throat> they nailed who they were. And the, yeah. what I saw in the book in my mind. Yeah, they nailed this. This and, is one uh, of those places that, yes, from the original miniseries deal, the Vogans are one of the worst looking parts of the show. It's literally like a dude painted green in a green garbage bag. Right. Okay. Have anybody seen the original yeah. Hitchhiker's Guide? So, yeah, for this one that they got Jim Henson's crew in here doing the these guys are amazing the they look fucking amazing yeah really as you see in the intro yeah sorry i didn't want to jump over their talks but i just wanted to bring that up oh no you go right ahead this i again i could talk about this film forever we talked about this a little bit longer when brahma had it up but the vogons yeah. as a alien out in in a book filled with billions of aliens they stand out as everyone turned when they go to alien voting they say, who's the worst among you? It's a billion to one. Everybody votes for these assholes, right? And that's, yeah, a great written character parts in, 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 or a great written group. Of, in well, they clearly, uh, so I, I just can't. represent in the that. story is hilarious how they actually just, in this version of them, they just nailed them. You're right. right. Yeah. I think they did nail here too. So there, there's that's enough in this movie that they nail. That's right. That's <laughs> lunch. Mm-hmm. I think I'll have soup today. <laughs> and oh uh, yeah so all right i'll the move poetry. on because uh, the poetry <laughs> the poetry the vulgarity of it yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> i thought it was quite good i like to describe the worst poetry ever is written by written by some chick in uh london or something like that oh yeah, oh, yeah. just goes to show nobody <laughs> likes the administrative state or bureaucracy nobody exactly nobody yeah because they're the take, bureaucrats and all that they shit, are yeah. the one all right, I'll I'll move on because I'll keep talking. Here is Brahma's number two, Pixels. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, seventies and eighties video game characters from Pixels because uh, I found it hilarious that all the stuff that we beam into space got to somebody, and the thing that they took it from it was that we're a warlike species and our video games are uh, all about attacking people and attacking things, so they come to try to take us over. And I love the scene where Pac-Man's creator meets Pac-Man and Pac-Man immediately bites his arm off. Yeah. So, yeah, I, it's, uh, it's not most people's favorite movie, but, uh, I love the concept of it. I love it at my, you know, because of when I was born, all of it makes sense to me, the pattern based stuff of games. And Mm -hmm. yeah, I would have been like Adam Sandler in this movie. I would have known all the space invaders patterns, all the Galaga patterns, all that kind of stuff. So it hits a little bit differently for me. Plus, it's got that's another Peter movie on the list that has bugs because it's got the, uh, the got centipede, centipede and yeah. millipede. So, Peter Dinklage yeah. is in this film. Yep. You've got um, Sean Bean is in this film for a little bit. And um, 
It's got uh, all the Divin- uh, Serena Williams. And it, yeah. it does a cameo. Peter Tinklage asked for, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Martha Stewart. And Martha Stewart. And he gets them in the White House as a sandwich. It, it, oh, my God. It just, yeah. Yeah, there's some Fantastic. funny parts to this, but I, I thought they did very well with that one, too. So, yeah. I thought it was good. Cool. It was one of the last, uh, last Adam Sandler movies that I actually enjoyed. And yeah, Peter Dinklage is supposed to be Billy Mitchell, the, uh, the, king of kong that is a complete cheater oh did you hear about all that recently yeah mm-hmm. he got his uh his uh he got reinstated but it's on a special uh a special old classic like thing so it's not the, the actual board now it's an archive website version that's it thank you it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's basically just a way back machine version of something that's it's there for historical purposes but it's not valid yeah, it's yeah. funny how it panned out. Well, there's now video and picture evidence of a of the last cheat yeah. where I mean the joystick is not the original joystick. So Well, and that yeah. wasn't even the part that convinced me. The part that I saw if you watch any of the videos is how the video screen loads. Right. It's yeah. Right. Because of the whole emulator emulation thing. and yep. exactly. Yeah, the, the the meme or whatever it's called that they use. Because yeah, the excuse was like, Oh, it's because of the video. It's like you can't do no, no, motherfucker, no. Like, that's not how it works, right? Sorry, go ahead, scribe. Oh, I was gonna say he's he's not out of the woods yet. He's got the he started that whole defamation lawsuit against uh, Carl Jobst, uh, the, oh, the YouTuber. To look at the, though. Yeah, I would except in this instance, he's he's pretty much sunk, and he's he's going to be out hundreds of thousands of dollars, and it's going to be it's going to be something. He's like the Alec Peters of fucking video games. <laughs> oh God, Alec Peters still owes me a tunic. From the original Axenar, Prelude to Axenar. He refuses wow. to that's take all my emails. Oh, yeah. There's somebody doing some class action thing against him. But uh, anyway, yeah. that being said, before yeah, we get to the next one, no, it's an interesting Rama, idea. Thanks for picking this. I'm glad you picked this. Yeah. Right. I wish I liked the movie a little bit more. The, the, the short mm-hmm. film it's based on is pretty interesting, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this describes a San Francisco from another Alien kind Nation. of forgotten uh, Alien Nation. James Con, yeah, yeah, James Con, Manny Potemkin. Um, I mean, again, I, I don't know if I, I, I didn't think I intentionally meant to like pick like you know good guy aliens who push against the stereotypes and so on and so forth. I guess there's just a theme. Uh, in the uh, in the except 80s, for the killer clowns, but yeah. <laughs> well, killer clowns. Well, I, I tried to bookend my list with with some good ones. But either way, uh, yeah, no. The again, you've got this uh, classic cultures, but much more down to earth. Literally on this one, um, the chemistry between Khan and Manny Patinkin is the in this between uh, Patinkin being just like the straight man and Khan being just like you know out of control half the time. Uh, the dialogue, the chemistry. Is just amazing, and uh, again, you have that sort of like well-established background of a completely different society and way of operating, and they're trying to integrate uh, into uh, human society. Uh, this movie ruined any enjoyment I could have ever had for Bright, you know, with Will Smith because it's like it's Alien Nation, but with like orcs. Yeah, and just like it, I, I it, that's a whole other conversation. But as soon as I, I, I can't now think. Whenever I see Bright, people are like, so oh much not concept. Like, that's exactly what I was yeah. thinking too, though. Yeah, yeah. Every, every time I hear somebody from the, I, I, I can, I can say this now because I'm so freaking old. Uh, the, the newer generation go like, oh my god, Bright, that's an amazing movie. This, and they're like, it's just Alien Nation with orcs. Like, what? What's that? I remember oh, the God. TV show was pretty popular for a while too. Yeah, the TV show went on for a lot more seasons than I thought it would in it uh, back in the day, and I, I watched some it was of them. One of Fox's first it. big hits too. That was a thing. Yeah, that was that was one of the first ones that put them sort of on the sci-fi stuff, yeah. yeah, they were they were known for sci-fi stuff, but uh, yeah, no, great great character. Uh, uh, individually, the uh, the species that he comes from, and all the uh, the politics of uh, acclimating and. Um, uh you know being being conditioned to human society and then and of course this the the societal commentary that goes on with the fish out of water coming in and having to adapt to this this new and different culture and everything it's just a great character great uh great uh, buddy cop movie in one sense and a good sci-fi in the other indeed and uh yeah so let's keep moving unless anybody else had to add anything to add about alien nation uh, it's just a good pick it's a good film 
They made a television show out of it too. So. Yeah, they did. And I'm trying to remember. Did I know Khan wasn't in the show, but did the same guy who played the alien in the movie play in the show? No, Mandy no, Patinkin wasn't it? No, Mandy no. Patinkin. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. There, there might have been, been like a couple of it, yeah. Yeah, there might have been a. I don't know if there might have been an actor that crossed over, but yeah, the main characters were all recast. I was trying to remember because I remember, yeah, you're probably right, but yeah. Anyway, moving on. It has been a number and number and number of years since I've seen either. Well, you talked movie. about uh, Axanar. The guy who played the Vulcan was the main actor in Alien Nation, uh, the older right. Vulcan in Axanar. Yeah, I forget his name. Uh, oh, Gary, okay. No, what was his name? It's Gary something. Yeah, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. It's the guy from Robot yeah, he was, Jocks. Yeah, he also yeah, was okay. in... Um, yep, yep. Enterprise. You're right. Does. I know who you're talking about so, now. Gary, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the robot yeah. jocks. I know exactly what you're talking That's why I was thinking, you yep. So Gary's number two was also uh, a dupe. So um, that's going to come up real soon uh, from there. But um, Uh oh. Yeah. Debbie does uh, Dallas. Gary's head two. Hmm. All right. And so we go to Andy, and his number two uh, is The Thing. And I picked yeah. the right film. <laughs> I it's swear this is on every no list we have ever. somehow, some way. <laughs> No one's ever seen this ever. Um, <laughs> Very obscure film. So uh, you, you should definitely check this out because no one ever talks about this ever. And it's uh, um, highly uh, underrated. Um, Alien is like totally cool and you know, will horrify you. So very, very unique up to that point. And um, yeah. You know, this was a remake of one that starred James Arness. Mm -hmm. You don't I say. Know. I did not know that. No, we're just picking guys. This is a great Kurt Russell film, too. We're going to have to just take one weekend and just talk about this movie, I think. At this exactly. <laughs> I think we could do enough research on this. There's a four or five films we did in this, so we could have done enough to, yeah, to do that. Um, boy, what a scary-ass alien. I was, was not surprised when it showed up on somebody's list. Not at all. All right. I don't think there's anything else we can say about this film. That we haven't already right yeah, now. Right. Yeah, probably not. Well, that okay, Andy? Here, yeah. and I'm not quite sure what this is. Or, yeah. Scene by scene breakdown. We could probably an EFAP. We could probably do an EFAP. Probably. Uh, so. All right. Tom's number two. <laughs> Critters. They bite. Okay, so. I mean, of all the films that came out in the wake of Gremlins. These guys had to be the coolest. Uh, speaking of the Kyoto brothers who uh, made Killer Clowns, they also designed the Critters. And, uh, yeah, I love the films, and uh, I think they're a lot of fun and uh, well-designed. And, yeah, but more can I say? Critters are great aliens. They come from outer space, and... They bite people. They bite people. I never All looked right. at Popples the same way again. Anybody can remember those things from when we were kids. Mm -hmm. so, on that note uh, as we head into our number one picks Eric Wimberg a great supporter of the channel who uh, always sends in uh, uh, support for me at radio uh, and whenever he can hear a very consistent supporter thank you so much Eric says Mars Attacks is so fun yes it is uh, thank you so much, so much for that and uh, yes let's get into our number one picks right now Kicking it off, what do we got? So, um, it's a morgue. Off the morgue from Spaceballs, 1987. Um, yeah, John Candy in this film was funny as heck. He had some of the best one-liners in this. Uh, when he gets his foot stomped on, when he's eating uh, the dog food out of the Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> oh, I mean. Yeah, I'm always eating. I'm always hungry. Liquid Schwartz. <laughs> Oh, that still makes me laugh. Oh, my God. Um, but uh, I think it was Gary, maybe Annie, and we were backstage, said the line of all time. Uh, um, funny. funny. She doesn't she look Jewish. Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, Chris Farley, took, Chris Farley took one of, his, uh, one of John Candy's best lines from this movie, which is when he gets up and he still has a seatbelt on. He's like, oh, that's going to leave a mark. Which was improvised, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because he got yeah. up without, he forgot to take the goddamn seat. <laughs> <off. laughs> Fucking John Candy. Oh, he looks right at the camera and he's like, funny, 
She doesn't look druish. I love that. That is fucking What the hell great. is all that? <laughs> 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 or what? It's her royal oh, highness's man. matched luggage. <laughs> Stop looking at my can. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's half man, half dog, but he's all John Candy. Oh, he's man. his own best friend. He is. He's his own best friend. And the ears. Oh, yeah. Oh, the ears. Ears, yes. Yeah, something like 35 pounds of batteries on John Candy's yes. back to make those ba- those ears work. Wow. How about that? And they didn't really oh, even do all ago. that much, but it, they're just so expressive at the same time. It's just, yeah. they just do little things and it just matters so much. Yeah. It works, yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't have, the film wouldn't have been the same without that. Oh, speaking I, the, of which, yeah. I forgot I have uh, I have one oh, of the the figures. Right. Remember you showed me that yeah. from uh, uh, Are you playing with your to- dolls again? No, or I didn't see you playing with your dolls there again. Yeah, that barf. I haven't uh, I haven't cleaned them up, painted them yet, but that's awesome. Nice. Visual casting. How about that? <sighs> wow. Barf. barf. This car, it's a Mercedes. Barf. barf. <laughs> Not in here. It's a Mercedes. <laughs> it's all possible. Can you save the car? <laughs> oh, I love that joke. They just asked for what fifty space bucks for uh, lunch, gas, and tolls. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the, what did he have? He had the special. That's what I ordered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where it's going with that one. Oh. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime. Is it too late to change mine to the soup? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I miss John Candy. Somebody no, get a doctor. No. Fuck the doctor. Not Somebody again. get this guy some Pepto Bismol. <laughs> uh, there's so all many right. one liners in this film. Your Schwartz yes, is we'll as here good as mine. <laughs> I could be here all night. All right, here we go. Uh, Thomas, all right, number, five, number one, The Strangers. They're strange yeah. in Dark City. Another, they're another cool. hive mind. So, yeah. Uh, Dark City, um, if people haven't seen it, came out the year before The Matrix. Some of the uh, actual sets were used in The Matrix, and most of the ideas from this movie were used in The Matrix. Um, But yeah, The Strangers, the whole thing is they can basically, they've got this um, ability to tune. They can put every all the humans that they've kidnapped and taken to this place to sleep and then change everything about them, implant new lives and new memories. And uh, they're ultimately trying to find out uh, what makes humans human or individuals because they're a hive mind species Mm. and what, uh, you know, what the soul is. So it's got uh, a great ending. And yeah, if you watch it now, you'll see all the stuff that the Matrix uh, got its ideas from. So. Wow, I've Love never seen this one. Never heard of this. Oh, that is no, really see, Roger Ebert seriously used to talk about this movie a lot. He loved it. Yeah, yeah, it is the Matrix before the Matrix. It was a year yep. before the Matrix, and wow. um, yeah, I I saw it when it first came out. I loved it. None of my friends understood it at all. They thought I was completely insane. Then they all ended up loving the Matrix, and it's like, guys, I've been trying to get you to watch this and take it seriously for you know, a year. And yeah, it's, it's a fantastic movie. If you haven't seen it. Yeah. Oh, Jennifer Connelly out. is a nightclub singer. First time Jennifer I ever saw Connelly Rufus is. Sewell. Yeah. The, it is such a noir. And honestly, if you can get the director's cut, don't watch yes. the theatrical because man, I saw it in the theater and I immediately thought the first five minutes ruins the whole twist of it. It just doesn't make any, why would you do that? It wasn't until I saw the director's cut. I was like, well, this, this should have been the one in the theater. Because at least yep. then, I mean, anyway, I won't, I won't say too much else. But man, it's 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 this the the, the look, the style of it, uh, the acting, the creepiness of it all. It's so good. Yep, and Jennifer Connelly is always hot, so that always mm-hmm. helps any movie. And uh, yeah, Rufus E. Will. I think that was the first movie I had seen him in as well. Yep. And then it's got uh, uh, Kiefer Sutherland plays yes. a fantastic role in it. Oh, that's and right. He's in it too. The, yeah. Yeah, and then the strangers themselves, they're all bit actors that you would recognize from, you know, they're just character actors that uh, you've seen in tons of different stuff. So Isn't it was, Riff it Raff was a one of them? great movie. Yeah, he's, uh, he's the lead one. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, that, I wanted he's to the one who takes the most Agent Smith. O'Brien? Way. Yes. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, cool. so. 
Yeah, it's been a yeah, long time. Yeah, if you haven't seen it, go check time. it out. It's great. This might be one I don't even have anymore. Uh, it's it's actually got multiple. I got, I, I, I got my director's cut right over here next to my next to my desk. Honestly, my little bookshelf. I just looked at it. Yeah, I should look into that one. All right. Anybody else? So yeah. Ding dong. Right. There's something Move I think along. I'm going to write down to go see. All right, up next. Oh. Scribes number one. The pod people from Invasion. Of yeah, the and the uh, contrast next. to my my good guy uh, aliens. Uh, my my favorite version of this is 1956 original, uh, based on Jack Finney's novel The Body Snatchers. They had to put Invasion <laughs> of the Body Snatchers on it to sort of distinguish it from. Um, uh, the old was the Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe book or the story or whatever it was. I think it was the Body Snatchers, but uh, yeah, no, just the uh, uh, unlike just about all the, all the other characters on my list, they don't look like aliens. They look like you. They look like your best friend, uh, your wife, your husband. Which makes it scarier, son. right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the 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 fear of not knowing who's it's it's sort of like with uh, who the goes things. there and the thing. Yeah, it's you don't you don't know who it is. Um, and the insidiousness of the idea of the pod people. Um, I think the, the 56 version and the 78 version, which is right here, 78 version had definitely uh, a better ending overall because the 56 version had a great ending until they decided, oh, it's too downbeat. So they'd add like a little happy ending bookend to it, which I thought was terrible. Um, it's been remade several times over the years. I think the, uh, you had, uh, 56, 78, then he had body snatchers in 93. And then I think 2007 was invasion with Nicole Kidman and Daniel Craig, but it took way too much time beating you over the head with undercurrent messaging about the pharmaceutical industry and things that just didn't, didn't work out that well for me. I keep waiting for it to be remade again if it hasn't already. But uh, yeah, no, the, the concept of the uh, the body snatchers, the original pod people still creeps me out. And the 56 version still holds up as far as atmosphere and everything else. If you can just sort of like wipe away from your mind the last like three minutes and just have uh, Kevin McCarthy there yelling and screaming on the freeway, you're, you're pretty much got a, a perfect still disturbing uh, uh, sci-fi movie. And you can you can apply whatever analog to it you want at the time. It was the Red Scare you can uh, put uh, you know, like with with the thing like you know it was an allegory for AIDS and everything. It's just great, great concept, great set of aliens. Contrary to uh, popular belief, not every single Star Trek episode was about time travel. <clears throat> it was every other one, and the the opposite ones were about body snatching. So there you go. Yeah, there's a lot. There was a, there's an episode of X Files that was basically. Body snatchers, body snatchers slash the things yeah. and everything. Yeah, it's a very common trope. You know, they'll, they'll you turn know, the into X-Files worms or thing. something. Yeah, the X Files things I can see is kind of paying homage. Yeah, by doing the episode right. Yeah, they did yeah. an Arctic thing, so it was kind of a thing deal. But yeah, yeah, it was kind of a thing there. But, but, as, yeah. but as far as I'm concerned, yeah, no, nobody ever got it as good as like a giant seed pod falling open and having a half formed individual <laughs> foaming out of it, and just like what the? That's <laughs> great. So good. Mm-hmm. All right. Great pick. That's funny that there's two Sutherland movies back to back on the list. Oh, yeah. But, uh, I thought about that. Not the same Sutherland. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're here Acting already. Mountain. And here's Gary's number one. Clever. I still don't know what his number two is yet. Kal-El. And uh, yeah, definitely. You're muted, Gary. Definitely the greatest yeah. alien of all time. I fooled you guys on that one. My favorite alien across the board. I really miss the uh, the Reeve movies. Mm-hmm. Yep, um, I was uh, I was Kal-El for uh, Halloween when I was five years old. Yeah, all it was the time when this film came out. Everybody saw it. Everybody wanted to be him. Yeah. Well, yeah. when I was a kid, I didn't get that he was an alien, you know, because I didn't read comic books or anything. I just watched the movie. But uh, Superman. You know, as an adult, you finally get it. You know, he's from another planet. You know, but. I used to watch the series, like, Strange Visitor from Another Planet. Mm-hmm. The serials and all that stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I don't think that... I, I kind of... You know, they've done some of the things for the opposite, right? Was it Brightburn or whatever that was? Did that when there was a came yeah. out and had the same thing and all this stuff. And, and there's just been so much that they've done to the character in the comics and in these recent movies and things that you just didn't need to do. And oh, 
gay. Exactly. You didn't need to do any of that shit, but they went after him because truth, justice, and the American way. Well, they took right. the American way thing away years Out. ago. Yeah. I'm right. like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, well, that's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, completely. He's our alien, damn it. That's yeah. right. He's, he's not a Russian anywhere alien. else. He wouldn't be right. Superman. He'd be you know, Red Sun. Well, that's right. one of the greatest parts or only good parts in Superman 4 is when he has that speech and he goes, this is my home too. You know, right. I mean, even though he is an alien, he, he now considers Earth his home. So he, you know, it's kind of, and it always has kind of been the ultimate migrant story, right? Or immigrant yeah. story, whatever you want to call it. But like, yeah. If no, he have landed a, in Canada, he'd end up being what, Castro? <laughs> if, he had landed, if he had landed in a city in the U.S. instead of out in the middle of nowhere where they have farm values, he would have been a completely different character. Maple Imagine man. if he landed in Germany. Oh, man. That would have been did totally he, different. Yeah, when did he arrive? Really from the comic books? When, when was the Ubermensch! He, when, He's when around was, for a while. It was definitely before 1939. So he would have... So he would have... Well, okay. Yeah, I guess... Well... Well, he, but, but he was already yeah. Superman in 1939, yeah. right? So you're right. Yeah. So if he would have wound up in Germany, you're right. Like, he would have been, been you know, yeah, he would have been something else. <laughs> it, there would have been two yeah. S's on that shirt. Wasn't that kind of what <laughs> Red Sun? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, that was good. That was good. Oh, there's a not to get uh, too off track. There's a there's a role uh, role playing game about superheroes that starts off with that premise that the first superhuman appears in uh, Nazi Germany. It's called uh, Godlike. It's kind of an obscure game now, but mm. interesting concept. Interesting. All right. Anything more to say on that, Gary? No, I'm good. Awesome good sauce. Uh, yes, very subversive. Yes. Clever. So this is Gary's number two and Andy's number one. Starman, Ooh. wonderful film. Yeah, very obscure. John Carpenter, uh, probably not. It's not talked about very much. Um, Which is funny because I think it's his highest grossing film, believe it or not, Andy. Mm -hmm. But this is like, yeah, I mean, it gets overshadowed by Escape from New York and the thing. But this is, it's a, it's an optimistic movie, which, you know, of course, with Carpenter is like, not uh, not usually his his uh, prime real estate. Um, Jeff Bridges, great performance. Um, he's charming. He's you know innocent. He's like you know, Karen Karen Allen is in it. Uh, does a great job. Um, everybody in the in the film does their their part really well. And you can kind of see how it's like <clears throat> even the bad guys. You see that well, they're just kind of doing their job, and that's how they would react. But um, uh, very. Um, very interesting premise. He comes to Andy Elliott is just like a glowing ball of energy and clones uh, her dead husband and boom there and they uh, hilarity ensues. Um, but uh, if you haven't seen it, I, I recommend it. It'll um, definitely be um, something uh, not typical in your alien genre. Yeah. Yeah, this is what, probably Carpenter's most mature movie, I'd say also. Oh, yeah. Um, but it's it's really great. Um, it's it's not the usual John Carpenter we get, which which is awesome. You know, I'm a huge John Carpenter fan. But this movie's this this movie's quite special. It's not really much to it. It's not it's not a big budget or anything like that. It's not super extravagant. But uh, you know, Jeff Bridges is <laughs> he's really good in this. Uh, Karen Allen is is well well uh, matched with him, and it's it's very. Uh, it's a very believable movie. I mean, you believe that this could really happen. And uh, it's it's really good. If you guys haven't seen it, check out Starman. Oh, it's a great film. In fact, I think I just brought it up in the back here. I think it's the closest John Carpenter ever scraped Oscar glory. Because Jeff Bridges got nominated for Best uh, Actor oh. for this. Mm. Yeah. Did not know that. It was a very popular film. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying. Like, yeah. Even though this is kind of the one that's become one of... Carpenter's a little bit more obscure titles. It was his highest grossing film at the time it came out. It's his biggest like studio film because he made it with Columbia mm -hmm. um, and all that kind of business. Plus, he got the Oscar nomination for uh, mm -hmm. Jeff on, on top of it all. But uh, this is actually going to be available in 4K in the new Columbia box set coming out. So you know what's really ironic about this is that this achieved what modern day Disney is trying to do because it appeals yes. to women because it's kind of a chick flick. And it's an alien action movie for the guys. 
Yep. It was the perfect yeah. date movie. So everybody's mm -hmm. happy. Of course, they're not John yeah. Carpenter, so. This really has nothing to do with it, but um, my parents didn't buy a lot of movies that weren't, you know, the kids' movies back in the day. But there were three that I never saw, but they they were on in their collection. And that was Starman. I still haven't ever seen it. I should go back and see it. Oh, wow. yes, you should. It's a good movie, yeah. Cocoon was the second one. And then the third one, um, oh, I just had it and lost my uh, train of thought there. Um, the Fisher King with Robin Williams. Um, oh, another classic. Were, yeah. yeah. And it seemed like they kind of... They're they're not interrelated in any real way, but it was that was the kind of movies that they ended up buying for themselves. Well, the so. Fisher King has uh, Jeff Bridges in it. There's that. that true. <laughs> yeah, that is true too. My parents so. let me watch things like My Science Project. I love that film. Hmm. It had a GTO in it. That's why Dad let me watch it. And Dennis Hopper. Hopper. Dennis Hopper. They cured everything but uh, diabetes. 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 <laughs> Well, well Cocoon is a great alien film, but uh, let's see if it shows up on anybody else's list unless there was more to say about Starman. We only have no, I'm left. good. There was the short-lived TV series as well, but uh, most people forgot about that as, mm, thank God. as well. And it wasn't horrible, but it just wasn't Jeff Bridges. <laughs> True. All right, this is the last one, folks. Here we go. Numero uno. Y'all knew she was going to show up. Queen. Now, was this, the other, was this the other one on somebody <laughs> else's list? Or no? Mm -mm. I think so. Uh, the typically, he makes the slide show it, yeah. Okay, so, uh, look, I mean, the reason I picked her above all the other aliens and alien, because first of all, the alien itself is just, the xenomorph is just so iconic, but the queen, was, like, how can you outdo what we've already seen in the first film? Well, there you go. And as Gary pointed out before the show, as we got into this, so I'd love to hear if he has any uh, interesting stories that he wants to tell about it com coming from his perspective. But this is an amazing piece of work of puppetry, of uh, marionette work. Uh, I think there's also a guy inside there on top of it all. Am I, am I wrong, Gary? There's a couple of guys inside. A couple there of guys, three, yeah. Three, but, but yeah, it's suspended from a big cable, and it's basically just a giant marionette, and it's really, really cool looking. Yeah, the way very it moves, complicated. But it, yeah. it moves very smooth. You know, it's it, it, the marionette process enabled that. And I mean, just one of the most expressive. Mm -hmm. Yes, one of the most vicious things, and just I mean that scene when she's like, "Stay away from her, you bitch!" And it's just that yeah. <laughs> that she lets out is just so ugh, so perfect. So <laughs> she perfect. rips Lance Henriksen in half. That fuck, right. that was great. <laughs> I mean, God. just. It's just it's and it's like almost like Geiger's original idea, but almost like perfectionated. Yeah. Or how, I don't know if that's a word, but perfected. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Because it is. It's just like this brilliant, beautiful yet ugly thing at the same time. It's just glorious. Yeah, stack. Ugh. Yes. Yep. And when she rips it off, because oh, she's just man. like, I'm gonna get that bitch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's definitely a woman fight at the end. Oh yeah. Yeah, like Saturday night at Walmart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be beating each other with their weaves. That's right. <laughs> Beads and are flying naked. all over the place. Oh, no. You <laughs> <can't>. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good so, pick, huh? yeah. Some people are upset. I'm sure that uh, the Predator didn't make the list. I know some people wanted um, What's Her Face from Species to make the list. Uh, so I apologize. I the Greek even paid money to tell we got. That. Yeah, more variety of movies. So it's we'll tough. Put those characters on other lists. We all know that. Yeah, we can differentiate a little bit down the road. We can have like scariest alien and stuff like that when we get there, maybe. But uh, yeah, we do want to do TV aliens, deadly. of course, and most deadliest. There's well, I mean, alien. you could do an entire series of top five aliens in a Schwarzenegger film. Right, mm -hmm. almost yeah, like okay. that. Yeah, I mean, the Coneheads were another one that almost made my list. As I see, K. Roberts brought up in there. Mm -hmm. um nick the greek uh sends in a buck 99 and says would you all count the blob oh yeah original and our remake both yeah yeah, yeah. if it was alien that counts. Or origin yep. it comes from outer space yeah and then he sends in another super chat thank you so much nick the greek for another 499 says wait a minute no life force those knackers were out of this world they're not true. wrong matilda what matilda may oh my 
space that's the space vampire one right mm-hmm. yes yeah that's what i thought okay so yeah that's what i was thinking of yeah. was barbarella human or alien now she's a human human who went to space yeah but she's she was an alien yeah she was she's an alien on a different planet an early the first yeah. r-rated uh comic book movie though mm. most people forget that they think oh blade no 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 there was that and heavy metal before blade but yeah right. barbarella Actually, wasn't even Barbarella rated X when it originally came out, or was it R? Trying to remember. I don't. But anyway, we got to get out of here because a few of our uh, guests have to leave. So, real quick, Gary, because I know you got to leave first. uh, You want to plug anything on your way out the door? I know Wednesdays you'll be hanging out with DC. Yeah, just uh, come check us out on Wednesday nights. Uh, uh, Andy Masterson and I will be hanging out with Doomcock on uh, Pop Culture Breakdown. So uh, good to good to see you guys. Uh, Hail to the chat. Hail to the wrenches. Take care and hail Mead. Thank you so much, Gary, for being here. It's always awesome to have you here. And I know you probably got to duck out here. So thank you again, brother. Um, And I think scribe, you got to leave next two as well. So why don't you go ahead and plug your stuff? Uh, Yeah. So I got a weekly show on Thursdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern called Ted Excellence with Ted X Bingo, where we take a look at interesting and or bizarre TEDx talks for fun and entertainment. Uh, did one on uh, Saturday as a special for several reasons. And uh, boy, it blew my mind as it usually does. If you're interested, go take a look. And uh, I'm also in the process of lining up a panel discussion on the uh, Daryl Brooks case with three true crime content creators on YouTube in my series, Living on Borrowed Crime. I'm hoping to have that going this coming weekend, this next weekend. But uh, keep an eye on my Twitter at scribe underscore light. And uh, I will let you guys know as soon as I got everything lined up because I got people from Australia and Canada trying to align time zones and schedules is it's a challenge, but I'm getting there. Awesome. Nice. awesome. All right. And I talks, I think you got to leave next as well. So go ahead and plug your wares. Uh, sure. So um, thanks everybody for being here. I thought this was a good list. Pretty strong. I mean, when you leave off things like predator and some of these others, you know that there's a lot out there and all sorry, stuff, guys. personal. Yeah. Sorry about that. But I'm going to head over to a culture stream. Help you yes, out there. this will actually uh, send you over there afterwards. Send so. you right over there and all that stuff. Yep. Uh, Monday Meltdown tomorrow, 9 p.m. Central on Comics Division's channel. We'll be over there uh, doing that. And um, have a good one. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Tox. Right, we'll see you guys later. later Docs. Andy, as you share your uh, thing there in the chat, uh, your link. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> Laboratory of Mayhem. All your one six scale fun in one spot. Look at all that behind you there. You, it seems like you get more and more every time I see you. Oh, yeah. I just did a figure for um, uh, X-Wing yesterday. He did a an un- – well, he's doing an unboxing thing. Went over the, the figure and stuff like that. So, yeah, opening up for commission. So people that are wanting – like, and I'm also going to start branching out into doing some of the, uh, like, Star Wars expanded universe figures that haven't been done, like like a Kyle Katarn figure and, like, some of the, the Sith Wars – Oh, that, okay. that have never gotten any kind of uh, treatment. I'm going to have to have pull you the trigger uh, and get you the information for mine. So. <laughs> and I'm going to have to have you find out how much it's going to cost me to make a nunchuck of Saurus Rex. <laughs> <laughs> With the Chuck Norris beard. Mm, that might be the sequel. The, now, you got me, now you got me thinking. The little denim jacket. Yeah. Well, see, I'm already thinking he, I want him to be orange, but the, then the beard wouldn't stand out so much. Hmm. So I'll have to think on that one. Let me think on that. All right. Anyway, <laughs> I still got to design him anyway. But all right. Uh, thank you so much, Andy, for being here as always. And I uh, appreciate it, man. Good My pleasure. You. Thanks for having me. And Brahma, uh, as usual, it's always a, a, a pleasant surprise when you get to join us. So uh, anything you want to plug or. Uh, uh, send anybody yeah. anywhere you got you got your channel do you do anything on your channel at all i actually do nowadays um so mm. on tuesday nights i've been doing party animal streams with uh i couldn't seven remember other people yeah. um yeah i'm actually even doing it on my youtube not just on the rumble so we've cool. got party animal streams on tuesday nights with some go. familiar faces including uh mad martigan and then uh and horror amarada usually um and then on Saturday nights, I do bourbon and boarding, where we talk about the week in hockey and have a have a couple fine bourbons. And uh, then the rest of the time, you can catch me with Tom, Culture, and uh, um, Comics Division, of course. And I'll actually be heading over to Culture's uh, panel next. So 
see most of you over there. All right. Yeah, I might pop over there for a bit. We'll see. Uh, and there's your uh, channel link in the chat there, guys. So check it out uh, as Daryl is also sharing it. So thank you uh, to the mods as well for all your help uh, and talks again for producing. And as always, thank you all for making this show possible. And it's a huge success. Uh, the show is uh, actually, I'm, I'm really kind of uh, surprised at how successful this show has been. And I want to thank you guys out there for making that happen. And Jay. Because Jay is a big part of that. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Anything to say, Jay? No? Guess not. All right. Well, I'm surprised we're able to even pull together a show since it seems like it's like Friday night at 1 a.m. We're like, hey, what are we going to do for this week? <laughs> well, this week, uh, to be honest with you, I had two or three people I talked to that I wanted to put a show together for. Yeah. And I don't know if half of them just kind of not get the concept or what. Like, let's just say, like, I, I don't think he's going to care that I mentioned it, but like, I le reached out to, to Andrew of Legal Mindset because I thought perfect person to bring on to do like top five legal dramas or courtroom dramas. But this time of night is real tough for him. So, and then, that, and then there was a couple other people I yeah. reached out to that just didn't get back to me or whatever. And so, like that. So, I'm working on that. I want to do like some more guests, and then the guests will actually pick the, the topic that we're doing, guys. So, sure. hopefully, that'll, I'll work that out. But, I got to do that a little earlier this week than last week. It just, it kind of just didn't work for me. So I apologize for that again, especially to, to toxic man who had to deal with a lot didn't of bother me. Yeah. Chalks is the only yeah. one who gets affected. That's the main thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So sorry to him, but anyway, with that, thank you again, guys. And here's the uh, end credits. Hey man, check it out. Huh? Oh, it's an alien.